Remember, if you like what we're doing here, make sure to give us a positive rating on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to the show. Also, make sure to check it out. Shut up. That was really low energy. <laughs> Shut up. Also, make sure to check out the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Andrew, where full recordings of this podcast are posted along with a plethora of other videos. Check it out today, and, listen, and thank you for listening. Now, on to the show. What do I usually say? Check it out today and listen for yourself. That's what I usually say. Um, what are we doing? Where are we? What, what is this? Guys, I'm going to be honest. Okay, well, I got, you know what? Let me do the intro, okay? Greetings all. Welcome to the Gaming Block Podcast, the number one podcast for all the pertinent video game news spanning across all platforms, including Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and more. I am your host, Andrew Rana, and today I am joined, as always, by the bad boys of video games, Jake Ward and Roger Bennon. On this end-of-the-year holiday special, we will continue the discourse over Cyberpunk 2077, give you our personal game of the year, and that's really it. So with that in mind, tradition dictates that I ask the bad boys of video games how they've been. And guys, I'm going to be fucking honest with you. I got a glass of wine right here in my hand. My legs are kicked up. It's fucking vacation mode. So you take it away. You're in charge of the show now. I'm out. We need to we need to have a talk with you, Andrew. <laughs> You've been in the bottle a lot. You've been drinking? Ooh. Yeah, sit down. You know, last night we were supposed to do this podcast on Sunday. And yesterday we went out to Kansas City. Had a nice little time with the guys, um, Guy Fieri's restaurant that he has there. Got the trash can nachos. Freaking awesome. They taste so good. Um, Walked around, saw some lights, did that stuff. Got back and we had bought eight bottles of wine. And along with that, Jake bought this other bottle. Was it wine, Jake? What was that? Yeah, it was it was wine. It was just like this huge. Okay. So we got nine. Bottle. We got nine bottles of wine, and that then our friends, they got whiskey as well. And let me tell you what, <laughs> we drank last night, and it was fun. And yeah. it was was fun. how did you guys feel the next day? I felt fine, honestly. Like oh, I yeah. haven't had a hangover yet. Um, I'm a little scared, but from what I had last yeah. night, I didn't have a hangover because I I'll have like three glasses of wine and like some shots, but I'll spread it out over like five hours, so it's mm-hmm. not too bad. But I'm always constantly buzzed when I'm doing it, so it wasn't I mean, too I, bad. I enjoyed it. Wine specifically always gives me the worst hangovers, and if I'm a, if yeah. I have whiskey, it's no go. I'm surprised I've never had a hangover, and like you've seen me get pretty drunk, Roger. Yeah, I'll just be like brightest day the next day. Okay, I mean let's not let's not be too exaggerating over here. Brightest day, you're never bright as day. Oh, you look like you have a hangover every morning you wake up. It's on. <laughs> it's honestly a treat when Jake gets drunk. I haven't really seen. I wouldn't drunk. say that. I don't like drunk Jake. Jake is drunk a Jake gets obnoxious and handsy and it makes me want to stab him. Such a treat. I love it. You, you know what? You can, like, fu- you can fucking deal with him. He becomes the definition of the oh, I love you, bro. <laughs> he gets drunk and I love it. <laughs> he really it's is, always, yeah. It's always a good time. Me, I just... I, I'm like so. I'm always at like a forty percent of telling bad jokes, but when I when I start drinking, it, it ratchets up to like ninety percent. It's just like bam, 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 bam. You just you get giggly, rhymes and puns, and then you like just want to like curl up in a ball and get underneath the couch. That's a mood. That literally happened once, and that's because I wanted to get away from you, fucking guys. <laughs> and for some reason, my mind thought I was under the couch more than I actually was. <laughs> Like, to me, I thought I was a six-year-old under the couch. Like, I actually fit my whole body. In reality, it's just my eyeballs under the couch. But that was, to, 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 my drunk, to my drunk head, I was like, ah, the whole body's under here. They can't get me. We were worried because, like, we thought you were going to, like, pass out and, like, suffocate. God, you should have let me. So we were trying to pick you, you up, and then you would kept freaking out because we were touching you. Yeah, because I don't like being touched. Um, Roger, how's your week been? Or your yeah, I guess it's been about a week. 
It's been about a week. How's your week been? Uh, it's been it's been okay. It's been pretty tame for the most part. It's been a lot of uh, a lot of just dealing with family stuff and whatnot, and uh, kind of getting over my sickness and stuff. But you know, mostly average. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. Average is good. I, I started so. my my last day of work was Friday, and it's only Monday, but it feels like it's been forever since I've been back to work, and I've been enjoying it. I've been yeah. soaking it up. Yeah. Like I needed just a break. You I, know? I I start I start my work uh up on the Monday after Christmas, so I get this week off. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. Should come that's up. What I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'll be in a uh, I'll be in Wichita for like a week, and then I'll be in Salina for like another week. What the heck? You're going to every yeah. Kansas town, Lawrence? Yeah, well, pretty much. I mean, there's definitely more than two towns in Kansas. No, nah, really not. <laughs> There's like gathering All right. places, but that's about it. Yeah, I I agree with that. Topeka's a gathering. We just <laughs> a got gathering like, of the minds. We just got super spreaders all over Kansas. It's me. I'm the super spreader. I coughed today. We went to Walmart grocery shopping, and I coughed just because you know I don't know fucking. I'm a human being that doesn't know how to breathe sometimes, so I just coughed a little bit. And this one person had a distressed look on them when I did it. And I was like, oh, no, don't worry. I was just sucking dick earlier <laughs> and had to get it out. Dude. <laughs> and their face went from distressed to more distressed, and they just walked away fast. <laughs> Around here, nobody would bat an eye if you just – no mask and cough. They would not care. Oh, yeah. I know. Those small town places, even now, I give Susan a little daily report how hundreds of thousands of people are getting COVID and – so many are dying, thousands a day, sometimes 2,000 a day in America are dying. Like, it's ridiculous how fast it is and how much it's spiked right now. But no one cares because, like, the media, I don't know, it's, they fucking stopped caring, which, mm-hmm. you know, not surprising. I figured, everyone figured this would happen. They're going to make a big deal about it at the beginning, and then they want to make a big deal about it. Well, and, they had to make it super big for big deal for the election, of course. And then exactly you know, and the conspiracy. Like, oh, right. We're over it now. The, the, the conspiracy theorist in me is like, oh, they want to make it a big deal to put it on Trump, and then the second he's out of office, let's not talk about it anymore. I know it's it's hard not wanting him out around the around election, no matter what. Yeah, it happens every election. So, mm-hmm. um, but this isn't a. Pod. This isn't a. Um, this is not politi- a podcast. This isn't a political podcast. This is a gaming podcast. It's a gaming. And podcast. with that in mind, it is once again time for everyone's favorite segment, the gaming riddle. Roger, hit us with the theme. Kind of sounded like Metal Gear. <laughs> All right, I mean, the scoreboard would- stands <laughs> as follows: Jake has five points, Roger has one point, and Andrew. <laughs> Has one point. That one point was I from Skyrim. Remember. I'll take it. I don't remember which one it was that I got that point, but whenever you guys don't Medal guess a game, a me- Medal of Honor Rising Sun. That's right. That's right. Well, we're going back to a little retro this week. PS2 era, boys. The riddle mm-hmm. goes as follows. Released on December 8th, 2005. First released on PS2 and eventually had an HD remaster on Wii U. A remake later coming to PS4. The game has five direct sequels with spin-offs, prequels, and more included. Um, Roger, you have less points, so I'm gonna let you go first. Oh man, I never do good when I go first. Okay, can you repeat it? The riddle? Yeah. The yeah. Riddle. Um released on December eighth, two thousand five. First released on the PS2 and eventually had an HD remaster on the Wii U. A remake later coming to the PS4. The game has five direct sequels with spin-offs, prequels, and more included. Bro, I have no it had a remake only for like an HD remake only for the Wii U. And even though it came out uh, on PS2. It had an HD remaster on Wii U. It had a remake on PS4. Oh, so it did have one or it's or is one coming out? It's already out. It's already out. Um Hmm. Yes, two. It's not a. Uh, it's not in the in the Shadow of Colossus vein, is it? Is that your question? Sure. 
Are you asking if it's Shadow of the Colossus? It's it is it is. Are you no? Game. Are you asking that? Okay, I'm thinking it's Ico. Is what I'm thinking. Oh no, it's not. Okay. It is not a part of that universe. Okay. Okay. I think that I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah. not in the Shadow Colossus universe okay. or those game series because mm-hmm. yeah, Ico is kind of like the Last Guardian and all that. So yeah, Jake, your turn. Um, only thing I can think of is it Fatal Frame? It is not Fatal Frame. Okay. Good guess though, because that did have um. Well, that had a Wii U game. I don't know if those games were HD remastered for Wii U. But I know um, Fatal Frame 5, I think, or 4, I can't remember, came out on Wii U. So that was a good guess. Yeah, so, I don't know if I got this then. That was a quick one. Roger, back to you. Mm, five direct sequels with spinoffs. Yeah. Spinoffs, prequels, and more. Spinoffs, prequels, and more. It's been remade PS4. There's a lot of them on PS4. A lot of remakes on PS4. Yeah, no joke. But how many of those were PS? How many of those were PlayStation Two games? Yeah, I know. What was that game? What was that game that was always compared to Twilight Princess because of the what? Um. Um. Uh. uh, Okami. uh, Okami. Oh yeah, I'm assuming it's not that since you had to recall it. Maybe I'm throwing you off. (laughs) But okay, was it Okami? No, it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Darn. Good try, though. Uh, Jake, back to Ooh. you. Wait a minute. I think I know what this is. Was um was this HD port uh, only available in Japan? Yes. Is it Yakuza? Roger, it's your turn. <laughs> you only get one question at a time, Jake. Okay. Is it Yakuza? Yes, it is, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Roger gets the point! <laughs> uh, um, wait, he didn't say what, Yakuza? It's Yakuza. It's just called Yakuza. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's the first Yakuza, yes, released December 8th, 2005 in Japan. The original Yakuza game was released for PlayStation 2, coming to the United States in 2006 for PS2. It had an HD port. Only for Wii U, only in Japan. The original two PS2 games actually were ported to Wii U. We never got those over here because they released Kiwami on PS4 later. So, good job. I didn't know I yes, had a Jake, Jake, you had it. <laughs> and you said it too fast. I mean, you paused for so long. I thought you were letting me guess. I'm like, okay. No, one question at a time. I mean, that Let's was really an unearned steal, but I'm going to take it nonetheless. <laughs> it's all right, Jake. You're still up. Five to two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh-huh. good job, Jake. I, you, I, I you, honestly, that, Jake. Like, how did you think of that? Just because he's he plays a lot of the games. Because like, there's like ten Wii U games. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and that, uh, of those ones that were on PS2, it was Fatal Frame and then that <laughs> Yakuza. Yeah, like the PS2 games that were on Wii U are few and far between. There's not any of them. Um, and then I was gonna add something like become the dragon but i was like that's too easy like Mm -hmm. i i gotta make these hard i gotta make them vague um but the five direct sequels is of course yakuza 2 3 4 5 and then 6 um the prequel is yakuza 0 and then the spinoffs they had the dead the i forgot what it's called dead souls i think or something the zombie one um judgment um i did not count yakuza like a dragon as a direct sequel because it's more of a new branch of the franchise um, even though canonically it is like this takes place after this, but that's the same for Judgment, so it's like not going to do that. But Judgment um, didn't have who's a name. No, it didn't, but it was in the same universe for sure. Like it was in the same city. There were things referenced. Like it's the same series. Um, and then there's the other two spinoffs that we've never gotten the ancient japan one so good job jake uh very impressed very impressed indeed um or should i say good job roger because you're the one that got it yeah you're right <laughs> yeah he definitely got I mean, it i did you were there for it <laughs> you see the point there's the point good job mm-hmm. um but good job jake moving on to what we've been playing boys i'm gonna be honest i'm back on the fortnite train Woo woo! 
No, I've uh, I'm on level twenty two. I bought the battle pass again because last season oh, I didn't no. get to level hundred. Um, and I'm I'm fully committed back to it. I've also been playing Smash Brothers. Sephiroth is a fucking beast. And for the first time ever, I've really been playing online, and I've learned that I am good on Smash Online, at least against the people I've been playing against. Um, Not against people who know how to play Sephiroth, though. Yeah, people that know he's very, very, very overpowered. But that kind of that's kind of like fun um, mm-hmm. playing as him. You he's do his you do his special attack twice game over like they'll be at 50 percent damage and you get a full hit of his special attack they'll fly off the map anytime um so yeah but now i forget what, with his special attack can you charge it all the way up and then walk around like with samus and her uh plasma rifle no mm-mm, you gotta let it go okay so it's not too overpowered i guess um but if you're a Let's close range on, <laughs> last final destination <laughs> yeah so but those are what I've been playing. Not too much to say about that. I guess I played Halo Wars 2 a little bit. It's a fun game. Played on PC. Um, I feel like it would be better on PC. Definitely, yeah. I played it on 360 a long time ago. And it was good, but it was like, this isn't a console game. Well, PC, it, that's where it it's like a novelty because like, that was like the only type of game that was on console. So mm-hmm. like it was simple and everything. But it was like a neat little novelty. But I was and it was only... Can, you time. can really tell that it's a console game too, even playing it on PC. Just the way they have everything laid out and the way that like the menus are very simple and stuff. It's like this they made it a console game, so yeah. it's mm-hmm. impressive. What's funny what's somewhere. funny is my my dad to this day still plays Halo Wars. I mean, he's like he's like crazy good at it. I mean he plays on the highest difficulty. He has all the buttons, like maps lay out like so he's like constantly flipping through all of his bases at like light speed and micromanaging it and mm-hmm. It's really funny. That's like the only game he plays nowadays. He's like super good at Halo Wars of all things. It's fun. Like I like yeah. it. See, that was my very first exposure to uh, Halo. Was Halo Wars at a really? uh, Walmart demo kiosk? Um, and I remember it was like trying to drive around a warthog on it, and I was just like, "This isn't fun. Is this what people <laughs> like Halo and they want to play this? Like, this isn't what I thought it was." <laughs> that's such a so I, like, experience. Like, the only year. person that's ever had that experience yeah well, i didn't really have the internet as a kid stupid I mean, I kid. Either, but i still knew what halo was no <laughs> still knew what halo was man everyone Come in on. my circle played nintendo or playstation so i never had anyone that played xbox until the 360 i, mean, I didn't either i played halo by myself but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> roger was like i was over there in the corner by myself having a great old but time thing is, yeah. you 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 had an xbox yeah i didn't got- know when i knew had an xbox <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I got an Xbox later because um, yeah, my friend really had an Xbox and he had. Halo. I mean, I played Halo on PS2, but and I was like, that's I crazy, to- Jake. I probably played Halo before you then because my probably. grandpa, he had an Xbox, and that's where um, that's where I played a lot of. Well, it's hard because I played a lot of my games through my grandpa, but also my dad like gave me the GameCube. Uh, played the N64, obviously. Played the PlayStation 1 for my stepdad. Played the PlayStation 2 for my dad. So, like, I had that exposure. And then my grandpa, he had the Xbox, and he got the Xbox 360, and he got a PS3, like, the original one. He still has that one. Dang, dang. Um, I, like, my- he got it on launch. So, I remember sitting there. I don't know what games. Um, Motor, uh, M- Motor Storm. I played that quite a bit. Um, and then there's, like, this PS game. Um, no, not Hayes. It was really just Motorstorm, which I like that game. That was a fun game playing, and it still is fun to this day. I have it on PSP as well. Um, See, I uh, I didn't play Halo until like 2010. Yeah, Halo. So I played Halo it was, wasn't it? two. I played a little bit of Halo two, but honestly, I liked Crimson Skies and the Hulk game more than Halo, so I didn't really play Halo. Um, oh, dude, I lived off of Halo one and two. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I didn't get I mean, into Halo I, until I made my parents give me an Xbox off of eBay just to play that game. Uh, really? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't until Halo Reach that I played Halo. But even then, I, I tell Jake to this day, like I have never beaten a Halo campaign that's not called Reach or Four. I've beaten Reach and Four. I want to sit down and play them all with you. I think it'd be fun yeah. to do some couch co-op. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you I guys haven't installed PC. They're all really good. Me too. Halo Three is my first um, online game that I ever played. 
I was like, I started with Halo Reach, and then I got really into it. Um, and then I watched like all the cutscenes for Halo One, Two, and Three on YouTube. Um, and then I bought Halo Three and played through it. Um, and then I played Halo One and Two. What's funny is my... I played I played Halo One and Two, and then I asked my uh, parents for Halo Three. And that was right when Halo ODST came out, so they got me ODST yeah. instead. Oh, yeah. Well, it kind of worked out, because that one takes place between uh, yeah. 2 and 3. And I still got all the multiplayer of Halo 3, so I was yeah. okay with and it. And with the Mythic Mac pack. Yeah. My problem was that, so since my grandpa had a PS3, he obviously got, like, you know, most games that came out on it. Um, or not most games, but, you know, he got, like, the big ones. Mm-hmm. And one of those was Call of Duty 3. So I played Call of Duty 3, way before i played halo way before and i was like i like this call of duty stuff and then he got four and i was like okay this, <laughs> Game is, over. this is this is next level there's some and that was like my first single player experience where like oh shit games have stories i'm not just fucking mario jumping around or link where the the owl tells me to do something but i don't really listen to the owl i just want to go slash the things and do the stuff it's like oh shit this modern warfare stuff is intense and then, you know, play Call of Duty 5 after that. I don't think I'd played Modern Warfare 2 yet. No, I must have. So, I, you know, I had a lot of Call of Duty experience. And then I went over to Halo and I was like, this is so archaic. This is like, you can't aim. That always, it pissed me off that you couldn't sprint. It pissed me off that you couldn't aim. Because it's that's what I knew. You ruined the franchise. <laughs> well, the thing was, that's what I knew from FPSs for like five years. Like, mm-hmm. every FPS I had played, you could aim down your sights, you could sprint. And to be fair, Halo is very retro in that style. It mm-hmm. is one of, like, it's the first design. successful. It's, it's almost, yeah, it's in the design. It's, it's almost like a spiritual success yeah. in a yeah. way with how it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the thing is, like, it, it's fast-paced without having sprint. Um, and, like, the only time you need to aim is when you're doing long range. Uh, you're still... You know, you're a super soldier. You can aim from the hip and still be super accurate. Yeah, I just never, I just never liked it. Like, because no. even even with like old like 007 games, you still aim down the sights to shoot at people. Like, no matter where they are, it's like every game I had playing, you aim down the sights, and that really still to this I think day. It was Medal of Honor that was the first one that did the like aiming down the like the iron sights. Yeah, and see, I played Medal of Honor too. I had Frontline and Rising Sun on the GameCube, and you aim down the sights. So, like, every single game, which, you know, now that I'm an adult, I understand, like, oh, it's in the game design, and, you know, I can go back, and I, I can play Halo now. Before like, if I you couldn't. want sprinting and aiming, you can play Halo 5, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't. Well, isn't it, it. Isn't Halo 5, 5 isn't it, is, no, it, Halo 4, I mean, 4 has sprint, but the I mean, Ironside I mean, aiming didn't come in until. Uh, and see, 4 is the one that I played and beat, because it had sprint, like, it was just like that little thing was Reach holding me back, but then. It reach had sprint, but it was like an armor ability, so you didn't and always have sprint. I always got it. And again, that's the other Halo that I beat was Reach. Um, but 4 was so bad that I was just like, this is what everyone's about? No, I'm out. <laughs> this uh, is stupid. No one was about that. It's like, I don't give a shit about this Cortana lady. I think it's kind of weird that people are obsessed with her thumb. I don't know. <laughs> Well, like, honestly, I was like, this is weird. Why do people care so much? I mean, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I'm like, no, like, get out of here. She's like in your head for over a decade at that point, and then she's just gone. It's like, oh, that's sad. I don't know. She's like a legitimately good character until they kill her. I thought I thought Halo Three did it better though, where you play two games with yeah. her in your head, and you played for like a majority of three without her, and it was kind of weird. And then at the end, you get her back, and there was like some weird like familiarity with having her talk to you again in your head. Where it's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, this is. You like you realize what you're missing, and it was a, a neat, a neat contrast, a neat feeling in Halo Three. The chief mm-hmm. talked a lot in Three. Yeah, I could have gone without the annoying interruption, but you know. To give the Covenant the bomb back, and then he jumps out, and he's like, oh. It, "Oh my god!" In Halo Four, Chief talks. In Five, Chief talks so much, like it's way too much. A lot more. It's a little bit too um, much. Excuse I don't me. really. His hate name it. is John. <laughs> No. His name is Sierra. <laughs> His name is Spartan one one seven. Yeah. There's just there's so much that Halo I'm- innovated on, but at that I mean, I don't know. Just with gaming in general, I was already kind of past it. I think Halo's a great introductory game and it's a great franchise to introduce into 
like someone that's not really into gaming. Mm-hmm. But once you've played Bioshock, once you've played Call of Duty, once you've played Mass Effect, once you've played like, I mean, you know, this is back in 2009 or whatever. Um, but once you've played all these other games, uh, Left 4 Dead, played a lot of that. Um, it just feels very dated in this I will, design. I will say that uh, like I still, to this day, think Halo has like one of the coolest sci-fi stories ever. Like, I love it. Oh, but yeah. When I play- oh, yeah. Hearing about the story, it sounds fucking awesome. Just the lore and everything behind it, but I, 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 when I played uh, Dragon Age Origins, that kind of changed my perspective on how narratives and video games can be. Like that, mm-hmm. that was a yeah. experience for me. Honestly, even Modern Warfare Two, I was like, because going from that to wait now, again, Reach, fucking amazing story. I thought Reach's story was fantastic. It, it was definitely one of but, the better ones. But isn't it Halo Three where he jumps out with the bomb? That's and two. He, Oh, that's two? Okay. Yeah, it's I've like played, the very beginning of two. I've tried to play two so many times, but I just don't care. Like, it doesn't hook me at the beginning. And I'm just like, I don't care. I've, I think I've tried to play all of them, actually, so many times. And I think playing with someone will get me through it, because it's like, oh, I'm playing, you're not playing, playing with, a with a bro. But you're like... Bro hammer. But I don't. I feel like a game... If a game has to have another person there for it to be fun... But and I know, exactly. again... You know, yeah, just it's just me. It's just me. And enjoy it. Enjoy good things. I would yeah, say Halo but... One is probably the most like dated feeling. Like you can feel the age in Halo mm-hmm. One. I still really it's, it's, it's like people are calling for a remake of One after, since Two came out. Yeah, I still really enjoy Halo Two. Uh, to me, it doesn't feel as dated, but that could just be my nostalgia. But even mm-hmm. out of that, Halo One, that's that's, solid. You feel the age in Halo One. I think it'd be interesting having me go through it. Like, I, like I said, I've played the beginning of them, but like having fresh eyes on this game because after the first couple of missions i know nothing about these games at all mm-hmm. nothing the thing I is Halo levels, i don't know anything has a decent story it's a little bit shallower than the rest of them because it's mainly just like their idea behind it was just like cool reward from getting to the end of the level yeah uh, but it's not bad i think it's one of the lesser story wise especially when you get to like two and three yeah, uh, it just keeps getting better. better. Did a good job setting up the foundation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. I there's still value in it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying you're not saying that. I'm just like, I don't know. Thinking back about it, they do a lot of cool stuff. Like they talk about Reach in the first Halo game. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it, like the Halo Reach literally like ends right where uh, Halo One starts. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So like where you see like uh, Keys and uh, Cortana leaving uh, Reach, and mm-hmm. then it shows them flying towards the Halo. At, during the credits, it's like, all I want to know is, did we lose them? And Cortana goes, I think we both know the answer to that. Those are the first lines of uh, Halo 1. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Um, well, I like that. Knowing that, it already is like, I'm more interested. And then um, it's like, also has a new meaning because if in Halo 1 you play, they're like, oh, did we lose the Covenant? But after playing Halo Reach, it's like, oh, did we lose Noble Team? Maybe yeah. that's what they're talking about. And it's like, yeah, yes to both. <laughs> Yeah, both are true. Well, actually, one's not really true. Well, you got June, but he's probably dead now. Well, I was thinking that they didn't lose the Covenant because they followed him. Well, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> All right, you nerds. Um, well, is there anything you guys... Yeah, I was about to say, is there anything you guys have been playing? <laughs> Jake, you been playing anything? Uh, yeah, um, I... What was I been playing? I, I, I well, there's something Katana else. Zero? I wanted to talk about something else before that because um, oh. I'm going to talk about Katana for a while. Um, but I guess, yeah, that's all I've been really been playing this week. I played a little bit of Smash again because I got Sephiroth. Um, and I started playing Gravity Rush again. I need to get more into Great that. Game. Great game. But Katana Zero, I kind of downloaded that on a whim because there was an eShop sale for Christmas or Black Friday. No, it was Black Friday. Um, so I just downloaded a bunch of like really cheap games that were on the eShop. And Katana Zero was one of them because I I never really heard much about it. I knew it existed, and then I watched like a trailer for it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It sounds like my type of game. And it's published by Yacht Club, so that's another plus there. Um, and man, that is a good game. Mm-hmm. Like I, uh, it's one of those kind of uh, a rage game, I guess maybe because of how hard it can be at times. Uh, but once you get like a knack for the mechanics, it's so satisfying. Like getting through a level. Um, like dodging everyone, hitting bullets back in slow motion, and um, 
it's had a few moments that I think were a little too frustratingly hard. And I think I just got through it by just sheer luck. Um, yeah, when I was, so I've only played like a little, like, I mean, a little bit of this game. I did the old, I'll boot it up because I bought it and give it the old 30 second try. And then, you know, distractions, other games. Um, but it really is, I think it was trying to harken back to those NES. Because it is, um, for people that don't know, it is, would you say 32 like bit? Eight kind of eight bit. Oh well, no, yeah, I get, no, yeah, you're right. It's like if it looks like it, this, it's kind of going for eight bit gameplay, but in the style that's like it, it yeah, thirty two. It, it looks, yeah, it looks more SNES. I, I um, think it's it's a little bit more detailed than even like any uh native yeah. sixteen or thirty two bit console could play. Yeah, it's a very um, pretty game. But it uh, harkens back to like old Ninja Gaiden, like mm-hmm. some, stuff like that. Like it, it, it once you know, but, um. I would say possible, but pretty harder. No, you, not you, harder. Because you've you got rewind. I was about to say, it's pretty fucking hard. Ninja Gaiden is pretty hard. It's, it's like well, Celeste. It's unforgiving. Because, because Celeste, like, if you ever played that, you've got a, a, a screen. And you get through the screen, uh, you're on to the next screen, and that's your checkpoint. And if you die on that screen, you go to the beginning of that screen. And that's kind of how Katana Zero is, too. If you die in the middle of, like, your newest, like, area, you'll go back to the beginning of it and have to try to figure out how to beat it without dying. Mm-hmm. Um, which is cool because that's also his like as you go through the story you find out that that is his like um, power is that he can see a little ways into the future so if he were to die doing something he would know how to n- get through it without dying it's like the um, and uh and it, it gets a little dark too at to a point where it's like anyone you find out his power is given him through a drug and anyone who gets like overdosed on that drug will live for literally an eternity in their mind. So you could like kill them right after giving it to them and they wouldn't like ever die. They'd just be in like this state of like vegetable state for eternity um, because of just their perception of time is so slowed. Um, And if you are on it and you can't get it, you'll eventually like start hallucinating and losing your mind and eventually be in the same state as people that take too much. Hmm. So you, you goal as a character is like you know carry your missions well so you can continue getting your drugs so you don't die which you find out later that's you know why you're getting drugged it's not like treatment for your mental state it's literally to keep you from dying Mm -hmm. Um, and then you start like slipping and slipping and getting withdrawal from it to the point where like you start missing out days and then at some points you don't even know if you're doing is real um, so it's really kind of a mind fuck near the end. Well, that's pretty cool. It sounds mm-hmm. I, you got me interested. Yeah, I, think I might go back yeah, and read that. It. It's like a four hour game too. Like I beat it like in one sitting. So like, yeah, and, and also I, you can slightly change the story too based on how you interact with the characters. I don't know how like varied the the end of the game endings are, but I know I got one ending because I chose to die to protect others. Um, and then it just ended the game there. And I was like, then I, my other choice was to like, no, I, I want to live and continue and like sacrifice these other people so that I can continue through the story. Mm-hmm. So then it went on for like another two hours after that. <laughs> oh God. So yeah, it, it's cool. Like it's definitely worth uh, getting through some of the harder parts. Um, and I also found out some cool stuff. Like there's a part where you got to go through like a gauntlet of challenges to prove yourself to some guy. Uh, but if you cut the power cord on his TV before he, like, starts that sequence, he'll never show up, and you can just kind of breeze through that section. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, See, I like, like shit like that. Oh. <laughs> which, um, later on, you have to do. You have to cut one of his television cords so that, like, um, you can get through a door he locks you out of. So that's kind of like telling you if you replay it and get to that point, it's like, oh, there's a cord mm-hmm. on this one, too. I can cut it. And then it's like, oh, I don't have to deal with him at all. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So that was uh, Katana Zero, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so. Definitely. Sounds... Um, no? Go ahead. No, I'd say, like, I, I, we'll, we'll probably talk about that later. Um, the game of the year. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Save mm-hmm. that. Um, I was going to say, uh, so if that sounds interesting to you, um, go ahead and check it out. Um, if it's not on sale on the eShop still, it's on sale somewhere, everywhere. And it's not that expensive of a game either. I would honestly say it's worth paying full price for Definitely, if you're yeah. curious. Probably like fifteen dollars or something, if that. Um, yeah. But it, it it does end on a cliffhanger, 
Um, so I'm excited for po- the possibility of a sequel or some story DLC in the future for it. Well, if it's Yacht Club, if if Yacht Club is uh, publishing and funding it, then they probably got the money to do it. Oh yeah. Um, and so, Shovel Knight, of course, has uh, a reference in there. Uh, he, his course. name is on an arcade cabinet in the background of one of the segments of the game. Of Probably one of the most minute cameos he's had, um, but a cameo nonetheless. <laughs> All right. Well, Roger, have you been playing anything this week? <clears throat> not, not really. I've been kind of just grinding out the same games I've been grinding out from the last week, which are Cold War and Diablo 3. I'm just kind of going back and forth on those. My I feel time. that. I didn't mention it, but I, I'm still playing um, Yakuza. I did, um, I, I did play uh, a Plague Tale that game. Oh, how was that? That was actually a pretty pretty enjoyable experience, in my opinion. I really was enjoying the story. The, the game itself is like based around stealth mechanics, and that can get like kind of frustrating because mm-hmm. uh, it's not it's not the best. But like, if you can get past that, for me. The story, it, it's not a long game. The story was good enough that it, it kept it kept me into it until the end. So I enjoyed my time with it. Okay, good, good. Because I I mean, I heard about the game. I think it's two years old now. Yeah, um, I played Tale Innocence. And it's like about the... Um, Bupon, Bup, Bup, how do you say it? Bubonic. Yeah. Bubonic Plague. The, the Bubonic. Plague. It's about the Plague. And you're yeah. like trying to escape some town or country or some shit. I don't know. Um, but it looks really cool, and I heard good things about it. Kind of same thing that you said, though, is that the story's good, but the gameplay is kind of like, eh, kid or miss. Yeah, yeah. There's sometimes where it's okay, and there's sometimes where it's like just really frustrating. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's not like it's around that time period. But don't go into that game thinking it's like an historically accurate game. Like it's not. <laughs> it's oh, got a lot so of hard. like got like a lot of supernatural stuff about it, which is fine. I liked mm-hmm. it. But it just. It's like the Titanic. Know that going into it. There really wasn't a Rose or Jack on that, but it was still an interesting story. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, would, um, <laughs> I would not compare it to the Titanic, no. <laughs> well, that's awesome, Roger. Um, glad to hear that you played that. So many uh, so many games, you know, that you just hear about, and it's like, you can't play them all, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, even yeah. if you own them all, you can't play them all. So, But hearing that review, I might... I'm always looking for games for me and Susan, so... So yeah, I, think, I think she might enjoy at least like yeah, kind of watching it with you or something. Or maybe she really. Like- so that's the thing is I've had her try to play a lot of games, and she does play some games and likes them. But she tells me like she'll be like, "Oh, um, we went through my whole gaming collection, all fucking seven hundred games or whatever I have now," and she you know just picked out all the ones that she was like, "This looks interesting. This looks interesting." Um, and then after that, she was like, okay, so all of these, these are the ones that I want to play. And then all of these, which was a bigger stack. She's like, I want to watch you play these. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, gotcha. So yeah, she just, she's all about the sitting there and watching this experience happen. Yeah. And it's not, and it's not too long. It doesn't really overstay its welcome. So I think, I That's, think it'd be fine. I like hearing that too. That's good. I'm, I want shorter games, both those games that you guys talked about. I like that short. I don't want long games. Yeah, it's nice having that short bite size experience. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, moving on to our fun question of the week. Nothing about jizz or condoms or ray. Uh, you know, uh, no, 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 nothing crazy like that. No radishes. No uh, radishes this week. <laughs> it's simple. What is your favorite holiday movie? Tis the season. <sighs> What's your favorite holiday movie? Mine, The Grinch. Jim Carrey? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's honestly great. Susan was watching it right before we came, uh, got hopped on, and I saw like the first 15 minutes. I'm going to be honest, I was cheesing like a mouse in a cheese store, you know what I fucking mean? I was ear to ear grinning. God, that movie is, it's just so funny. Mm-hmm. And it was like, so she was saying like, oh, you know what, I've seen this movie as a kid. It's kind of like it's got some adult humor in it. I'm like, yeah, it does. It's it's so good. So those are the best kids movies because it's like a lot of kids movies come out and they're like, oh, it's a kids movie. It doesn't have to be good. But it's like, no, you can make kid movies good. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's a the prime example of a good like family movie, I would say, because it's still a good movie on its own. But, you know, it is a kids movie. So it's not like 
he's not going around like killing people like John Wick because um, he doesn't like their <laughs> Christmas <laughs> spirit. Uh, <laughs> the John Wick, fucking love those movies. Thanks for recommending them so much. Like I love those movies; they're fucking awesome. I'm glad you listened, watched something I recommended to you. <laughs> yeah, I eventually get there. <laughs> But yeah, the, the, the John Wick, a good family movie as well, a good Christmas movie. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I like that Grinch movie. It's probably, I mean, that's just like, it's very fresh in my mind. Um, it's probably my favorite one. Yeah. I'd say it's up there for me. I like Polar yeah. Express too, honestly. See, yeah, that's I big one for me. I really enjoy like Polar, Polar Express, Express, but I I hate the visuals. Like everyone really? looks so visual. dead-eyed. <laughs> I like it. I think it's unique. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing with that um, Jim Carrey uh, Christmas Carol movie. Um, that Jim one. Carrey. They did They did an, a, in the same style as Polar Express. Same people as Polar Express. They did the uh, the Scrooge. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Which that one was... I, I liked some of like the, you know, Ghost of Christmas Future imagery and stuff like that. But, like, when mm-hmm. they just people, it's really weird. Yeah, they're like they're like PS2 cutscene people. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Roger, what's your favorite one? Um, probably my favorite like actual Christmas movie is Home Alone. I really like watching Home Alone. That's uh, a solid one as well. It's, it's, it's a watched it's both of those last year. Well, I'll I'll say this right around like every year around December, I get like a huge Star Wars hit, and I try to like I usually binge them or something. And that ties into mine with the Star Wars holiday special. Shut up! Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> Honestly, I I uh, unironically like that holiday special. Uh, it's not my favorite. Okay, wait. But... So when you say that, do you mean like I, I got to make this clear for the audience because I know what you mean? But like, you're not saying that you unironically like it, as in you'll sit down and actually watch the whole damn thing. I mean, I will sit down and watch the whole thing. I have before, and I and I will do it again. It's not good. It's not. It, it's so interesting like how who it's, approved this yeah it, people going for an baffling. hour it's baffling it's and then it they is. had grandpa watch porn in the living room oh my god i'll never forget the f- fucking part where there's like one of the wookies is trying to fix the machine and they fucking call customer service yeah. and then they actually have the whole scene talking to customer service i'm like what the fuck am i watching I think the coolest thing to come out of that though was the animated part where they introduced That's like, what everyone says. Um, that 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 is the only thing that is in HD from that because that is on the uh, I don't know if it's in the new set, but in the set I have for the original saga before the trilo- the sequel trilogy came out, mm-hmm. it has the animated segment on that on Blu-ray. Oh, cool! Um, that's it. That's it. They didn't they didn't do oh. anything else. Well, oh. does that fit into like the universe? Is that like technically canon? Or <laughs> I don't think no, so. No, they don't acknowledge it. No one acknowledges it. I am Boba Fett. Um, <laughs> no, but like they did acknowledge it um, in Mandalorian. They they had Life Day mentioned in the first episode. His like gun is the one Boba Fett has in that animated special. Terrible. Um, awful. So terrible. What's your it, real answer though? <laughs> <laughs> wow, it can't be a real answer. Fine. Um, I'd probably say Christmas Vacation. See, I was going to say, when after I said um, Grinch, I was like, oh, people are going to roast us for not saying like Christmas Vacation and Home I'll Alone. Say, you guys all those. Yeah. Home Alone, Christmas Vacation, and Grinch, I think those are like my staples for Christmas. Those as are probably well, my well, top three. As well as uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, same. You know, the Christmas movie I really like watching that's got awful, but I love watching it, is uh, mm-hmm. Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've never seen that. Are you serious? Uh, I haven't oh seen God. a I've lot seen of those, I haven't seen a lot of those bad Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, like Twins. Watch, it's so or, good. Uh, what was it, the the Lawnmower Man or whatever it was? It's a treasure. We have to watch it. Jake, what do you mean? Every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie is bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> At least the Terminator? scenes with him. The scenes with him talking. Listen, Terminator. He's great because he is a robot. Because he's a robot. Well. <laughs> he does that yeah. very well. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, those are good picks. I'm glad to hear all of those. Um, one thing yeah. I will say, we should mention a Christmas story. I don't like it. Do you guys like a Christmas story? What's a Christmas story? 
It's the one where the uh, kid gets his tongue stuck. Yeah, to I've, seen it, I've, seen it billion, I've seen it a billion times, and honestly, it's just nah. <laughs> it's a nah. Yeah. It's a wonderful life. I think it's a good movie, but I, I I've never been. Movie, but I never feel like watching it. Now, I've never been the one to make it a tradition. Like, now, even my family never traditionally watched it. While yeah, we're on the subject, I don't care about the Christmas story that much. I should say that I fuck with the Santa Claus movies. Oh, oh those two. Those are so good. The first I, one. The first is, two. Is, I it. It's a really fucked up world <laughs> when you th- that universe <laughs> when you think about it. Uh, like. Whoever kills Santa is just like, oh, you're Santa now. And the thing is, they must have really hated that first Santa because they just are like all oh, for Tim Allen oh, when he shows up. Yeah. And like he was getting people's like shit wrong because like, you know, people didn't believe in him because they weren't getting the presents they wanted. <laughs> it's like, so he had to die. Sticking yeah. with the Home Improvement Cinematic Universe, uh, uh-huh. Christmas with the Cranks, too. <laughs> Throw that in there. I. I I'd re- I, honestly, I don't like that movie. I would probably just watch the John Tron's review of it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more entertaining. It's not great. It's We're kind of frosty. You know, and frosty then this year. the last thing mm-hmm. is I despise Elf. Not a fan of that movie. See, I like Elf. Oh, I like that movie. I hate that I movie. Elf is good. I don't mind it. <laughs> Reference too much. It's played too much. It's it might not be a little that good. Movie. I like that movie. What's wrong with you? It's not that good. It's not. We watched it the other night. We all laughed. I know we all didn't. You laughed, <laughs> and everyone else was like, "eh." But I think that goes. That's Will Ferrell, right? Yeah. That's just kind of. It's kind of like um, an association because I don't like Step Brothers at all. Yeah, and even like Talladega them. Nights. I don't like. He had that character role. Which mm-hmm. happens to a lot of big Hollywood actors, and you know the Adam Sandler effect is that they find this one thing, and with Will Ferrell, it's being the gullible, silly, goofy, dumb guy that has a good heart. And see, that's the thing. When I was younger, yeah, I would watch a lot of like, uh, like Ben Stiller, Will Ferrell, uh, um, Adam Sandler movies, Owen Wilson, and it's like I remember liking them a lot, but I don't and like i don't like their newer stuff and then when i go back and try to watch their older stuff i just don't really care for it anymore either mm-hmm. yeah same um, i think the other guys is like one exception for um will ferrell i think that's a really good one he does i think it's because um, him and mark Wahlberg work so well off each other because it's kinda like it's kind of like will ferrell's playing his usual character but you finally have the person that's kind of the audience being like well you just shut the fuck up dude <laughs> like yeah <laughs> Like, it's so fucking stupid. It's like, yes, this is what we've been saying for the last 10 years. <laughs> it's like, finally. And then I, I've like, as a kid, I liked that. Like, click. Because I, I thought the, the movie was a cool idea. Dude, that movie uh, was like, messed with the up. Road. That movie made me sad. Yeah. Yeah, that movie, but I just, the ending is... I honestly sad. don't really... I've never understood why people really like Adam Sandler. I don't think any of his movies are funny. I like Adam Sandler. Um, I think his okay. older movies are he he was he's different. There's not really anything like him. Um, yeah, people he's imitate him. Of I kind of respect him for just making. He's just the funny movie. voice guy. But well, he's the funny voice guy. But at least with his older movies, his movies always had like some heart into them. Happy Gilmore had heart. Mm-hmm. Um, Big Daddy had heart in it. Um, yeah, yeah just like the stuff like in click like that's a well yeah so once moments. you get past once you it's, get to the like, 21st century that's when mm-hmm. he just like starts he's st- i mean it's you know because they got the joke where it's like oh the dog keeps humping everything oh my exactly. god yeah the grown-up stuff like that's when he stopped caring he was doing like, it for a paycheck and, and people now love grown-ups and i'm like i've started, so i went and watched grown-ups too with a few people and it starts bad. with a cg deer standing up in his bedroom and peeing all over him and i'm like this is what oh yeah no, no no those movies are bad and he is doing good movies now and also if yeah. you ever get the chance some of his more serious movies um i know he did one with don Cheadle about 9 11 apparently mm-hmm. it's like really good so that's like um, jim carrey does really good serious roles too um mm-hmm. it's just and- they're tight casted that's what mm-hmm. they are they're in hollywood and it's like oh we don't want jim carrey in this because we know if we put him in this goofy movie it'll make 500 million dollars so it's like do the goofy Let's face go. Unless it's dumb and dumber too. Well, the, thing about, the thing about Adam Sandler is he kind of typecast himself, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
<laughs> well, the thing yeah, is, yeah. He, he makes movies now just to make money. There's no passion in it anymore. Well, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think some of them. I think he good. just wants an excuse to go on vacation with like, friends. He's been doing you know, and make I, a few million dollars doing five, it. Five years ago, I would have agreed, but now he's doing shit like uncut gyms, and he's well, like that's not his stuff though. The stuff that's like Happy Madison Productions. But that's him acting. Is what I'm saying. It's like mm-hmm. him as an actor. I think he's still like there. But I do agree that like the other stuff is for vacations. Um, okay. We're gonna move on though because this is this is a video game podcast. <laughs> Probably, yeah, true. probably should have been like, "Hey, what's your favorite Christmas game?" But nah, we'll save that for next Christmas. Uh, my Christmas uh, game, uh, Rudolph the Red uh, Reindeer for the we're, Wii. We're gonna jump into news of the week. I hope everyone enjoyed that nice little segue. <laughs> yeah, talking about we didn't really like movie. off the rails this uh, this. Uh, you know what? I drank a whole bo- I held a whole glass of wine. <laughs> Are you I'm right? Fucking, I'm fucking. Uh, let's go! Yeah, cut that clap out. Um, well, do it, Ralph. We're going to move to news of the week. Jake, hit us with the news theme. Don't bang. Oh, my goodness. Fucking. Oh, my gosh. That's the news theme. What what do you want me to do? That's the news theme. One. We vetted this before we started. We have one news story of the week. Um, There are other news things happening, but this is the biggest one. And everything else is still either developing or not that important so mm-hmm. we're just going to talk about the biggest one which is of course the never-ending saga of cyberpunk 2077 you love to hear and let me tell you this headline is it gets worse for cyberpunk so last episode we discussed the disastrous launch of what many called the most anticipated game of the year since then much more news has come out none good for cd project red first the game has been delisted from the playstation store With that, PlayStation, Xbox, and Best Buy are all allowing full refunds of both digital and physical copies of the game. Along with this news, rumors of a class action lawsuit from CD Projekt Red investors have sprung up, citing false advertisement and, quote, action that attempted to hide quality in order to gain monetary benefits, end quote. During a recent investor call, it was made clear that the developers of the game had no idea of the quality of the entire game, um, something that is easily that is easy to believe since most work has been done remotely since the pandemic started. They too are in talks of doing a class action lawsuit against studio heads. The Metacritic score of both PS4 and Xbox one has settled around a 55 with a much lower user rating. Now there's a lot more news um, in cyberpunk. Of course, there's the news of uh, there's a new bug on PC where it is running the best that it just deletes your save file. (laughs) <laughs> People have been experiencing that. That's good. There have been a few hot fixes coming out on all platforms, but none of them substantial enough to actually fix anything. Um, I'm trying to think anything else. I, I remember there's one quote that I found interesting, and I'll let you guys go off in a second, but I want to say this. Uh, during that investor call, one of the developers... So, so the story right now is that the project heads knew the quality of the game. Of course, they lied. They said like, "Oh, it runs surprisingly well. Um, it runs good. We have all these trailers. We're not going to allow anyone to review our game. Um, if you get an early code, you have to use trailer footage. You can't use your own in-game footage. You have to sign this NDA saying you won't talk about the bugs. You know, shit like that. Really covering up the game." Um, that's why no one knew about this until launch day. Um, but even then, it was the day after launch day where everyone was like, holy shit, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Nothing is right. Everything is wrong. Um, but one of the developers was like, I, you know, we find it ironic that we made this game about like against big corporation and fighting for the little man. And then you guys pulled this shit on us or something. <laughs> and apparently the guy had no answer for that. He was like, uh, I don't know. So um, I, my thought about all this is that A, Someone's going to get fired. Undoubtedly, someone's getting fired. I don't know if it's going to be the CEO, Mr. the president, CD Project. Uh, Mr. Mr. CD Project himself. I don't know anyone over there, but someone's getting fired. B, CD Project Red is tarnished. They were critical darlings for three years, maybe four years. Um, that Witcher. That Witcher at, after Witcher 3. Honestly, and- if, if, if this would have came out and been a solid like game i'm sure it would have got a netflix series too oh definitely yeah um but now i think cd project red has lost all credibility 
Um, the fanboys have died down because the first three or four days, me personally, I was getting in so many fights with people because people were defending this game to the end. They were blaming the consumer for buying the game on old yeah. hardware. Yeah, they were blaming. So they were blaming Sony and Xbox for not having good enough hardware. Um, they were blaming literally everyone except CD Projekt Red. Of course, I think it was just a big state of denial. But I now love those they arguments because it's like, it's like, yeah, you obviously shouldn't try to play Uncharted Four on your PlayStation Two. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't work when you put it in the PS Two. This the funniest is technically supposed to work on the Xbox One. My my fu- the funniest thing was people were like, "What do you expect from like running on PS Four stuff?" I was like, I don't know, dude. I just played The Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima, and those games look fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, you know, this argument doesn't really make sense. And, you know, that's what you saw in so many replies. And, of course, these are fanboys. There's probably, like, 10,000 of I'm them. Like, but- how are there so many fanboys for an original IP with its first video game entry? PC gamers uh, is really what it is. It's people that loved Witcher 3. It's people yeah. that loved Witcher 3. Yeah. And they're like, Cyberpunk looks fucking awesome. I love CD Projekt Red because, you know, they're a big PC-centric thing, and they can't they can't comprehend that their game is bad. So they're like, oh, no, it's everyone else's fault. But yeah, even that... I don't get that either because it's like, I'm a huge Halo guy. I, I don't care for Destiny that much. <laughs> well, it's not even like I Destiny. It's a different type of game. Yeah. My whole thing like, is... If just because Bungie like, made it doesn't make it gold. Yeah, my whole thing is that if you like a game and you like a franchise, and again, I'll let you guys talk in a second, but wouldn't you want better like i understand that you want a game to be really good but why would you defend a bad product and why would you defend false advertisement and why would you defend nda is not even letting you use your own capture footage because they're trying to hide the bad stuff like why would you defend that that doesn't make sense and it's, I guess it's the same thing with anthem too i remember the same people coming out in defense of that because bioware yeah, um, I mean more or less because that was after Andromeda. So this, this is fanboys bigger, that died off, kind of. I think uh, reaction. I mean, like with both of this and uh, Anthem, I, there's people I work with that know that will defend it till the end of the day that it's a good game and they haven't had problems with it. And I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, you haven't. I mean, I mean, so the thing is, I've heard it's a good game mm-hmm. from uh, anyone that's played. It, I've heard it's a good game, but the whole haven't had problems thing that's just bullshit. And they're lying because everyone's had problems with this game in some mm-hmm. sort of way. And it's like always the same. It's like consistent problems among everyone. Like mm-hmm. just cut scenes like where the guy drives off on a motorcycle. There are like hundreds of videos of him getting stuck on the flat on the um, telephone pole as he's mm-hmm. driving away. Oh, yeah. No, it's the same glitches they see over and over. But and that's, that's already... impressive when you have consistent glitches, not just <laughs> random ones. Yeah, um, but we already kind of went over all that. What do you guys think about this whole PlayStation taking it off? You cannot buy it digitally anymore. Like, it is gone, and they have not said anything about it coming back anytime soon. So, I like it's it. off of PlayStation. Sign. You get a full digital refund on PlayStation. That's not a good sign. I know, like, yeah. I if think... you got PlayStation to do that, something's bad. Like, and I saw. I think good on Sony. Mm hmm. For not like just letting this slide and having some quality assurance on there. I'm sure they could. There's some games on games their patience too for this. Who knows? Yeah, because I'm sure like if Sony would, would have seen the completely. exact state it was in, it would never have gotten on the shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. It's it's a little concerning, but so I mean, okay. There's a lot here. Xbox didn't take it off of its store, mm-hmm. which. Xbox had a marketing deal with Cyberpunk, so I yeah, kind of really get why they wouldn't take it off. I think it would be Didn't the right they move have for them. Special editions uh, Xbox One X. For yeah, mm-hmm. no, the, yeah, they went like the whole nine yards with Cyberpunk. They had a controller, so. and then they had a special like external hard drive that matched Which it. Fucking Xbox just can't catch a break. <laughs> no, <laughs> no joke. No joke. <laughs> they try. It's like, and then here's that thing. Like, you know, everyone's saying like oh why, why are you playing on xbox one and ps4 that's not how it's supposed to be played they have a limited edition xbox and Four i hate ones. that argument i hate that argument because if you the thing is they, i've never heard actual people use that argument i just heard oh i have people. oh, oh i have 
good. Also, I love the fact that the special edition console that ties in with the game is a discontinued console after it came out. (laughs) Roger, the people that use that argument are people that are idiots and they're fanboys is what they are. Like I, I know people that are like this, and what they'll do is they'll say, "Well, what do you expect? You have to run on your hardware stuff." It's like no, and that's where the whole false advertisement thing comes in. They let us on to believe this whole time that it would run well. I'm not saying it's going to look beautiful, and I'm not saying it's going to look as good as the PC version. Obviously not. Games mm-hmm. don't do that. But they had multiple trailers. They had multiple interviews. They had multiple marketing things. All saying this is going to run on PS4, Xbox One. This game was supposed to come out before the new consoles released. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the yeah. thing, too. Like, I, I was under the impression that for like the last six months, the PS4 and Xbox One versions were done. And no. all they were doing was just working on next-gen enhancements to have that done at launch when the new consoles came out. I think at first I thought that as well until they delayed it again. That's when I was mm-hmm. like, "This game's fucked." This game. No, w- no, when when they did the 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 delay after going gold, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, that, that was a flag. But I meant like the the for majority of this year, I was fairly certain that this game was pretty much done. Yeah, and, and we're, we're gonna look the way it looked because it's not out of the realm of possibility for that game. Like, it's physically possible for that game to look as good as the trailers on PS4 and Xbox One. Oh, it is, and I think it eventually will look that good. But it's uh, this game just needed more time in the oven. It wasn't ready for release, and they released it because they either that needed or wanted awesome. more money. Because you I would think don't... that yeah. with the investors would be the reason they pushed it out so early. It's curious that they're the ones doing this lawsuit. Makes me feel like some weird sketchy stuff's going on over there well i mean so investors are hard because of course investors are always going to say push it out push it out push it out push it out but at the same time investors only know and honestly investors don't have too much inside information as to like what we know because we hear all the investor calls we they, yeah. it's not like they get behind the scenes looks and stuff they know what we know honestly and from what they saw it, it's the same thing we heard everything's going well it's all fine. We just need a little more work to iron out some bugs, things like that. That's all we heard. They didn't know any of this, just like we didn't know any of this. Oh, the only people that knew were the people that were putting the game together, which were the studio heads. Mm-hmm. Because everyone's working remotely because of COVID. No one's like, I mean, there are people in the office, but no one's really seeing that full project come together except for like the higher ups. And they were the ones they duped the customers they duped the developers they duped the investors they fucking mm-hmm. duped everyone this is this and is why are now this is why See, i and I... I... stuff because like this is mm-hmm. too common nowadays and just the same reason with the anthem it's why and maybe yeah. like i'm more quasi fair about it because i didn't really get burned so i'm like not as like hurt by it or whatever yeah so like i'm not like super upset at project red i'm like i'll just wait till they fix their game and then i'll pick it up um, Which I think is warranted because so I bought the game because I buy almost any game that I want on release because my whole philosophy is I want to support the developer on a thing that I like well, and, the and best they thing made you want to support that. them. I'll admit, like they're with all the stuff they're spouting out, it made you want to support them. But yeah. yeah, until so, and then it's like, well, the game's shit, it's broken, and I'm like, well, okay, I just spent fifty something dollars because you know it was on sale or whatever just spent like $53 on this game. I'm not mad at anyone. And the only person I should be mad at is myself because I made that decision to buy the game day one with knowing that I hadn't seen any real PS4 gameplay footage. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to return the game because I'm just, I just don't care. I'll wait for it to be patched. I wasn't going to get to it anyways. You have the best version of the game. I know I do because I have it on disc. The one reason I want to buy that game is because of how broken it is. I want that experience. <laughs> like the, that's the, the thing. G- I love this because when the only things I've seen that come close to being like this broken was Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom. That's Sonic. No one cares. <laughs> this is exactly the biggest broken game I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, yeah this is insanity. <laughs> That was no, another. Guy, I don't think was this big though. So that's another uh, thing. No, <laughs> a lot of uh, CD Project Red fanboys have been saying it's like, well, 
How come people give a pass to like Assassin's Creed and Madden and Call of Duty? All those games have bugs and stuff too. It's like, dude, it's nothing like this. GTA is not even like this. Like even Sonic time. Boom in its original like ship state wasn't this broken, and that's a broken game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me. I'm gonna look. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Um, just about like so. What do you think a class has action lawsuit will happen? And do you think I that's think so. like the right thing to do? I, uh, you about, I think you so. Stuff, you hear about this stuff all I, the time. I I'm honestly. It's like with Red Bull. They promised that it'd give you wings, and it didn't. <laughs> Uh, Jake, hey, that got a great lawsuit. Great. <laughs> but I yeah, I, I think it totally, this totally deserves a class action lawsuit. I think it's uh, uh, it's pretty shitty business practice. I just hope that and I'm pretty sure like, like everyone who bought it will get a dollar. It. I'm hoping this will stop this freaking practice of releasing games and then patching it out for the next couple months. Because every, that's another every thing. Game releases this way. Yeah, that's another I, thing I keep hearing too. Is like, oh, well, of course it's broken at launch. That's how all games are. You just got to wait for the patch. Yeah, I like, hate that. Like, no, it should come out done. The thing. I want that to not be normalized. That's I, the one. Like one thing uh, you you could say anything you want about Nintendo, but like they don't ship their games out until they're done. And eh, sometimes, <laughs> eh, sometimes. More they're recently, trying. they've been they're getting lazier. They're getting mm-hmm. lazier as time goes on. Um, what are some examples? I, what are some examples? Freaking Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah, see, that's a big example. It, the thing with Pokemon is very Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> see, this is the thing too, when we bring up Nintendo, it's like, okay, wait, let me just... Wait. Because <laughs> Pokemon isn't not done, it's just they cut content for no reason. No, there's parts of Pokemon that were not working when that game launched. Like, the just, Dude. like... Going online was un- undoable when that game. Well, that's launched. just Nintendo. Um, yeah. that's um, on- if, you, if you talk about it online and Nintendo, that's. I'll talk yeah, about yeah. a big one. We don't even talk about that game that did Nintendo. not work. It works uh, now. Okay. That's a feature of that game that did not work. So, the one we've been playing recently, Smash, the online is broken, mm-hmm. and it, there's no excuse. It's 2020. Well, like, no, they don't I'm not the gonna, Nintendo Pass. And listen, then I'm talking about like the 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 game itself, the multiplayer. Yes. Nintendo I'll, doesn't do online, <laughs> but that's, that's, see, that's such a that. cop out answer, though. Like that's such it's a not a cop out. No, answer. I'm not copping out. That's that I'm. I don't like it either. They do online though. Arms online works pretty damn well. Yeah, back when it was free, and now they make you pay for it. It's worse. Arms? No, just all of it. Well, I'm saying arms online. I I played that a lot, and it's not as bad as Smash. So there's one, mm-hmm. and I would argue a big one: Breath of the Wild. That game dropped frames all the time. That game was not complete. Like the, I don't, I do not know what happened in development. Oh, but the story of that game is not done. Oh no! Like, I gave it pass because I just enjoyed playing it so much. As a good game, like just as a game, it's a good game. But that's the thing about Nintendo is they just get so many passes because they're yeah, Nintendo. It's like I, I gave it pass for Zelda just because I the experience was too good. Mm-hmm. I don't get passes in Nintendo anymore. Nintendo fix your fucking games. Yeah, um, anyways, I think I I don't know. I saw like Cyberpunk was like in the top rated games on Metacritic. It was like in the over a thousand for the year, so it's rated really fucking poorly. Um, <laughs> but going back to this, I think that what's happening because that discussion of well, well, of course every game's broken at launch. Obviously, that's a hyperbole. There are glitches and stuff at launch, and it is a lesser experience at launch because they are going to get that. Week one patch in, week two patch in, and you know mm-hmm. iron out the kinks because you you know, it's hard even now that you make a game but you don't know what it's going to be like when millions of people start playing mm-hmm. your game. They're going to find anything and everything, so of course it's you're going to have to. It's iron too out the common problem. nowadays, though, and you see it. The it is. I agree, and, and I think, but I think with hard. Cyberpunk, I think though after this. Developers are looking at Cyberpunk because, like we just said, three weeks ago, CD Projekt Red was an industry darling. Everyone loved them. They were like the company to be. They were the they were the top. Now I don't want them to Red Red to like die off though. I just wanted to do better. I still think they need to buy them. I agree, but I think all those other companies are seeing how raked over the coals CD Projekt Red is getting. And I think this anger is going to carry over mm-hmm. to the and next the thing, game that's the thing broken. Was, though, like, 
like industry crunch had already been getting a lot of heat. And that's why a lot of companies like have been starting to kind of move away from it. And with this, I think it's going to be the the nail in the coffin for uh, these kind of games coming out. But yeah, I, well, I don't know. The whole crunch argument is different. Crunch is unavoidable. Um, I, if it's, I think in most cases, I don't think it should be a practice. Um, I think if you're passionate enough to stay, if you you want to elect yourself to do crunch because you're passionate about the project, go ahead. But if you're being forced with no overtime pay to crunch, but on even the project, then, that's CD Projekt Red didn't force it. It was voluntary crunch, and then also they did pay overtime. It was and voluntary was- crunch, but if you didn't volunteer, you can go somewhere else. That's what it was. They still still get paid overtime too. So not everyone. Yeah, they did. At no, CD Projekt Red, not the freelancers, the freelancers who did crunch, did not get overtime pay. Well, they got normal pay. Yeah, they got paid what they would have were supposed to get paid for not crunching. Oh, we need to fact but, check some stuff, aren't we? We might need to fact. There's check a this lot of people that I didn't hear about that. did not get overtime pay Here's because the the only the, 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 there's a lot of freelance work that goes into these games. And whenever they get caught up in crunch, they don't get that extra pay that the people that are like on the team get. I would right. check on that because I know a lot of companies do that, but I don't know if CD Projekt Red does that because they're a Polish company. Up. And there's you have a narrative that supports CD Projekt Red when it's doing well, right? When like for example, when they're crunching, when it's like, okay, well, we have a narrative that supports them because they're gonna pay overtime. Now that the game's bad, and then they're in the negative limelight. Oh, now it wasn't voluntary. So I just get really sketched in conspiracy theory. Well, the thing is, like, yeah. the voluntary yeah, thing is, it's like yes, it's voluntary, but you can work somewhere else if you're not going to volunteer for this. That's what I heard it was. I didn't hear that. Maybe with freelancers, but that makes sense because they're freelancers. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, if you're not going to do the mandatory, if you're not going to do crunch, go somewhere else because, like, yeah, you're a freelancer. Like, go somewhere else. But with their employees, because CD Projekt Red, they grew exponentially for this game. They had like 100 employees 10 years ago, and they're up to 400 now. And what I heard was that they did the extra, they're working the Saturdays, but people are getting paid overtime. And then also, it was only like, four saturdays in a row or something like it wasn't the crunch wasn't that bad Mm -hmm. it wasn't terrible but in light of all this it's just like stuff state of the game it's like why did you even crunch like was the game really it's like what was all this crunch for like what did you guys like what was being done maybe the game was unplayable and they had to crunch Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, it could be at this point, the way it launched that maybe they honestly needed those extra five days to make it il- run. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know, because it had like, a very substantial day one patch, and that obviously didn't fix the problems of the game. And I'm just not at all for crunch at all, because if you just like listen to interviews from like people that yeah, have been through it, especially okay. like Bungie's team and the, when they were doing Halo 2 is hell. Okay. That's like, what it's- everyone brings up is Halo 2 and then... um the telltale games which Mm -hmm. those games were hell and those were really bad but those are like the two worst ones Mm -hmm. and bungie was was first like starting to bungie they it was voluntary because they wanted to put be the ones who put the work in it because microsoft would have just found someone else to do it because it's like yeah it's kind of like star wars it's like oh oh okay i'll make the death star because you're gonna find someone else who can do it (laughs) Uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> and I want to be the one who puts the flaw in it. <laughs> Bungie's the uh, empire. But no, yeah, like, it's just a lot of Bungie's people, like, yes, like, it's voluntary, but if I don't do it, you're going to find someone else, and I want to be the one who puts that work into it, even though well, I don't want to be in here I'll doing do, this. I'll agree with Jake, where, like, the crunch as a normal thing has to go away. Like, it, it's mm-hmm. vulnerable, too. I think crunch is inevitable, and, and and the thing is, it's in every game. Like, every single game that there is, there's crunch, except starting um, with ET. Except the guys that made Hades, they made it a thing that they will never do crunch. And look, it's one of the best games of the year. Um, super massive games, I believe they are. But other than that, every you, single look at game, Yacht Club games they they aren't crunching on Shovel Knight at all. Well, d- definitely not. They probably did for the first one. Like, absolutely. Do you think they're only working forty hour weeks? No way. They were crunching. Like Isn't, every no, game company, at some point crunches. And I don't think it's a problem to crunch. I think if you want to sit there and you want to be like, you know what? No, I want to work more on this game. I want to make it the best that I that's can the make thing. it. Like, if you're passionate about okay. it and you want to put the work in, go for it. But it should never be something that a company demands of you. 
I think even then, at some points, I think if they're like, guys, to get this game out, to make it great, a famous story, God of War 2018. That game is, people say it's game of the generation. Like, it's the best game ever. Or not ever, but like, well, some people do say it's the yeah. best game ever. Like, people love time. that game. Like, people love that God of War game. You go and see interviews with Corey Barlock, he'll say, like, that game, um, I think it was Shuhei Yoshida at the time was the guy that went around and, like, checked in on all the first party games. And he played it, like, two months prior to it releasing. He's like, this is awful. It didn't work. It ran poorly. Frames were dropping. It was buggy. It was a piece of shit. And he'll say it was those last four weeks where they like really put pedal to the metal is what made that game from like a seven to a 10. And it's that crunch at the end, which sucks. It does suck, but it's not like these people aren't getting compensated either. Because if you work at the studio, you're getting paid overtime and you usually get a pretty fat bonus at the end as well. And at CD Projekt Red, they did have their bonuses tied to the Metacritic score. But once they saw how poorly that is... I'll give them credit, and this is the only credit they deserve because everything else is really shitty. But they did tell all their employees that they're still going to get their full bonuses. It's not going to be affected by Metacritic scores anymore. So they're still getting compensated. They're still getting paid. And Mm -hmm. those bonuses are like – those people that work at CD Projekt Red, they're getting paid really well. If you look up like the average like pay of – or average income in Poland, it's like 30-something thousand. If you work there, you're getting like 80,000, 90,000 a year. And those bonuses are six-digit bonuses. So they're getting paid to do the crunch. And most people that do crunch are getting paid. And we're talking... The Halo 2 story was wild. It was bad. They said after that that they'll never do that again. It was Mm -hmm. terrible. People were having mental breakdowns in the office. They were sleeping under their desk. It was an awful situation. And same thing with Telltale. People would sleep there. That whole company, I mean, it's no wonder why it went under so fast. It was just so poorly ran. Mm -hmm. So those are like the two worst examples. And then, of course, EA, it has like the dark days, like back in early 2000s or whatever. But I think as long as you compensate your workers and you know what you're signing up for too, because if you are a freelancer and you know, okay, if they start doing crunch, if I don't want to do that, I'm a freelancer. I'm going to have to find somewhere else to work. Like, it's just, it's that kind of cut and simple. They're not going to give you overtime because you're not a full time employee. It's like anywhere else in the world. If you're part time at a grocery store and then they're like, okay, holiday hours, we need to stay open longer. And you got 10 more hours, we're well, still not over full time. I mean, you know, you know this. Like, they're not going to give you overtime pay. They're going to give you your normal rate of pay because you're not a full time employee. It just happened to my brother, actually. He works at Target. He got more hours because of the holidays, but they're not paying him overtime because he wasn't getting 40 hours before. It's not unique to this industry, and it's something that I think is getting better. It still needs to be more better, but I don't think it's something that we need to like demonize and get rid of completely. No, like that's the, it shouldn't be get to that point though. Like it never should crunch ever get to that point that it did with like Halo Two and Telltale. Which oh no, it shouldn't. And or, it, or even like Cyberpunk. Well, I think Cyberpunk's is fine though because the only crunch they did was the last five weeks. Like that was it, mm-hmm. and it was just a day. I don't know. That, we, that we know. Or of. like all the stuff that was coming out with Naughty Dog too. Yeah. But even the Naughty Dog stuff, a lot of that was debunked as like just a pissed off ex employee, <laughs> and that's that's the thing too, especially about the Naughty Dog one. Was everyone complaining about that crunch was on the outside? All the developers of the actual game that did the actual crunch, all of them were like, "Did you see the game we made? We just won eight game awards. We're gonna have hundreds of awards. We got paid giant bonuses. Like they're fine with it." If your developers are complaining, then yeah, I get your point. I understand. But no one at Naughty Dog was complaining about that. They wanted to do that. They're getting paid to do that. So, like, why is it wrong? Well, so you're also taking, like, Naughty Dog, where you're taking, like, the good examples from that, you know? Like, there's so many bad examples of that, too. And I think that's what Jake's trying to say, where it's, like, it kind of just needs to, to be normalized out. Because the bad examples you don't hear that much about. And we don't know what sort of non-enclosure agreements that these people have to sign that are developing the game for the crunch time specifically. So, yeah. I, I, I mean, it also I, sets a bad precedent. If, if it's like, oh, good things come from people who crunch, 
why don't we do that? <laughs> That's not a good example. That's not a good thing to lead by. But, I mean, it's kind of like the company's choice because, you know, like I said, every game does crunch. Like, every great game that has come out has crunch. Like, Red Dead 2 crunch, God of War has, like, Ghost of Tsushima. Every great game that you know, they had some form of crunch in there. And it's all about, like, I think it's a balance act. Because you could be like Hades, who didn't crunch at all. Like, they didn't at all. They said they were 40-hour weeks, that's it. And they released a really good game. But at the same time, that game came out like a year and a half ago in early access, and it took them forever to get the final version out. Now, it's a great game, but if we're looking at like a realistic business sense, Sony can't sit there and be like, okay, you guys take nine years to make Last of Us Part 3. Like, they can't do that. They can't fund that. That's too much money. It's like, it's too I don't much know. time. I think Sony can. I think those big businesses yeah. are the ones who can. I, I have think a- so. I think you would be surprised how much it costs because, like, once if you hit a rough patch there, like 2006 is a great example, 2007 for Sony, when they hit that rough patch with the PS3 and their games weren't doing too well and stuff, it was looking dark. Like, m- uh, the only company that could probably do that is Microsoft because they have, like, fuck you money. Yeah. But Sony and all these other. I, I, t- I think a lot of these people. Well, have and the thing with money. Sony, too, is they like lose. That time- now where like the rough patches are, are nothing compared to mm-hmm. the rough patches. And Sony has made a lot of good business decisions, li- at least recently, by like cutting a lot of like the extra tech that they made that didn't sell that well. They're most mainly focused on their TVs. They don't really do much with computers anymore. No, and they're just an they're example. About the PlayStation and their and their movies. They've really improved their movies too because those weren't doing so hot for a while. Um, so they've really focused. They're getting money now. Well, um, yeah. they're not as spread out, and as a cult company as a whole, they're doing a lot better than, than especially back in 2006, 2007, where they were making devices with 100 media card slots that you would never use. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and Sony's and, just an example, of course. And they're. Now they could definitely take nine years to make The Last of Us Part 3. They're. Well, I still don't think that they could because that costs, you know, supporting a studio of 500 people, paying them every year with no revenue coming in. Like, that's why Sony shuts companies down. That's why they shut Liverpool down. That's why they shut Manchester down. Like, they shut these studios down because they they either take too long and they're just burning money. So, it's like, you guys got to do something. You got to – we're a business here. We can't just have you bleeding money. Oh, and and they're kind of like- – they're kind of a bad example because they do other things, but like take Ubisoft for example. All they do is make games. That's all they do. And if you're Ubisoft and you're saying, "Okay, we don't want to crunch for the next Assassin's Creed. It takes 2 years already. If we don't crunch, it's going to take 3 years a game now. If you have one misfire game, like if you have one that doesn't sell and it kind of bombs, you might be done." Is that's another problem with the industry is like quantity over quality so like oh we have we can bomb this one because we got another one coming out next year it's like well if we had three years we could have made a good game every three years well maybe like i mean that's Mm. what they did with assassin's creed was they were doing it yearly and then people are like these aren't good we're done so like okay we'll do it two every two years but Mm. then at the same time far cry started becoming annualized and you know they it's a whole like juggling act with them and you know it's. I mean, it's a whole thing, and we could go back and forth on this forever because and it's just it, different it's just ways like, of looking at it. it. As an industry, you can watch yearly games; they just slowly decline in quality every year. I, every now and then, you'll get like one that's like, "Oh, that was good." I mean, um, but not often times. do yearly titles stay consistently good. I would say that the two K games consistently are good, and the um, MLB well, with 2K, games. Is, those are nice because they can just kind of build off what they did the year before yeah and same thing mlb does is that they just build out the year but Mm -hmm. at the same time like they already got a game madden can't do it though that game seems broken every other year (laughs) like yeah yeah, because they give you the same game with a roster update and don't fix anything that was wrong with the last one yeah i mean i think what was it like madden 19 had madden 18 like imagery in the stand that was the that was the that was the latest one madden uh 20, oh, man, twenty had nineteen had stuff. Had 19 yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, So it's just like it was sh- like they don't give a shit about those games. They just like ah, well, I was put Patrick Holmes in this one. Well, of uh, course they don't. It's like who would? <laughs> like, yeah, you know. With Same with game stuff like MLB year. and Two K, like they seem to actually like care about those games, mm-hmm. especially Sony because it's like oh, this is our game. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, so. those are also like, I, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, like, what's our competition? RBI baseball? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the com- and you know, but what's the competition to men? Like, yeah, I, they uh, have the football. I mean, that's it. There's just men. And <laughs> there's I, not many yeah, people buy it every year because there's people that just play men. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. and but again, like for all those games, I there's crunch for all those. Mm-hmm. And but at the same time, it's like it's just varying levels of crunch because you know crunch could be an extra two hours a week. That's technically crunch. You are crunching because you're working. Yeah, we're, more we're talking than you're like the be. extreme of crunch. Yeah, and but the, I think the examples of the extreme. And when crunch you're talking are, about like that kind of crunch, that's more of just like oh, we got to put in some overtime. But you're <laughs> not like oh, we got to get people living in here to get this game out in a week. But the only examples I can think of are Halo 2, which was 18 years ago, and then Telltale, which was like 10 years ago, which that company... Halo 2? I don't know what Halo... I don't know. I was ballparking it. (laughs) But still, like over a decade ago, we're talking three console generations ago. Like this Mm -hmm. is... It's so old. But the fact that like it still happens... But it doesn't happen like that anymore. That's what I'm saying is it doesn't. It doesn't happen like that anymore. Because the industry learned you can't sustain that. Your your team will dissolve and go away if you do that. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's what the main reason. Telltale. Like that's the main reason Microsoft lost Bungie. <laughs> yeah. I think it was they were just their persistence to get those games out. hmm And that's why you don't see like the gears come out any, every year anymore and, and mm-hmm. you know things like that. And or they'll do the Call of Duty thing where they have three teams and they'll rotate in and out and stuff. So mm-hmm. even Call it, of Duty, it, you can like you can see where it started catching up with them. Like Call of Duty just weren't great even with three teams coming working on them every year. I well, bet your that's ass like, that's that's why everybody's so mad nowadays about Call of Duty is because the, the last game was like like just on a technical level so much more impressive than this one. Mm-hmm. Well, that was, but, I think that was a whole. That, it was just so mismanaged. This new mm-hmm. game, and I um, bet your and, ass there's tons of crunch for Cold War. <laughs> like they made that oh, game yeah. in like nine months. Oh yeah, I don't even want to know what they had to go through to make that game. Uh, like but that's yeah. just, also what you brought up earlier is freelancers mm-hmm. way more popular now than they were even 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And what they'll do is they bring on a shitload of freelancers. Microsoft infamously does this with Halo. Like they just have so many freelancers come on, and that way you're a avoiding crunch, and b you're having more hands on there. But and then you run into the Halo Infinite problem of you have no real real clear vision because you have so mm-hmm. many people working on it. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's kind of like how I it's like Star Wars. You look at Star Wars. It's like they pumped out a movie like right away every single year, and it just was like, oh, oh what do we do? <laughs> Don't even get me started on Star Wars. Don't even like Star Wars was like once when every trilogy was once every three years. You had enough time to write it, enough time to That's film a... it, enough time to think about it, and then it was like, oh, we're doing it all now. That's yeah, another history that Star Wars. Were one person with one vision. This one yeah. wasn't, and there was a lot a... of people. There was improvements. Yeah. But there's a lot of drawbacks too. A lot of a lot of suits involved with that. Yeah, you can just tell. Where, mm-hmm. where Star Wars was all came from a place of no suits, and it's it was one person's vision, kind of. I mean, the the original trilogy was kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, it was, it was it was um, kind of a yeah. Spielberg had a but lot. It was still ma- like George Lucas was the one calling the shots on all of those. Still, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and it was his overall story. That's um, another so industry. Everything though. that was made was to his approval versus Mickey Mouse's approval and his board of investors and <clears throat> and the everyone else. <laughs> See, this this brings up a good point though because we focus so much on like video game crunch and like, you know, people sleeping there and working all these tireless hours and stuff like that. But I honestly feel like any other entertainment industry you look at, the exact same things happening. When they're filming for a movie, you're telling me they only work 40 hours a week and they're done? No. Like, they'll shoot a scene however many times they have to to get the right scene. And Mm -hmm. it's three weeks maybe to shoot all that. But they might be working 150 Uh, hours in those three weeks. Like, Stanley Kubrick was the the Halo 2 of that industry. (laughs) 
yeah, yeah no you know, so you have like those really really bad examples of like yeah these people work them off but then the other ones are like you know they're filming mission impossible right now i bet they're doing more than 40 hours a week but that's just no, what you do in the entertainment the industry is that- they what they do is they film another country and then pay everybody else less from that country <laughs> that's what yeah, they do that's what they do <laughs> Um, but same thing with band, the bands too. Like when a band is making an album, I mean, come on, they sleep together. That's all they do is they make an album. They sit there for hours writing lyrics and doing music and stuff. And when you're passionate about this stuff, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Like as long well, that's as not my argument is like, if you're passionate, yeah, yeah, I know, it, I know. Right? Like, it's when and, you're like, it's when it's like, you're passionate for it. But if you don't do it, you're going to lose your job and the game's you, or like whatever you're making is has to come out on a certain date. That's where things start to suffer. I agree, but at the same time, it's I like think with, with like music, point, movies, and games shouldn't have a definitive date to come out until they know it will be able to come out on those dates. I agree, but at I the same time, I think you also have to get it out because then you run into problems like. I, I mean, you do nuke them forever. You mm-hmm. run into those type of problems. Now that that game that's, never that's, comes out. That is development hell. Or uh, that is, okay. that's a completely different thing. You're right. That, okay, fine. Days gone. Days gone. Because Bend, Bend, Sony Bend released Uncharted Golden Best in 2013 on the Vita, and then mm-hmm. they took six years to release Days Gone. Six years. Mm-hmm. That is way too long for a game. Listen, this was and at that point, talking you're about just, the above C3D people here. I know we are. <laughs> and they made a pretty okay game. <laughs> yeah, that was the one thing. I, I never really followed that game much. And then I just heard it I, wasn't I, great. I, and I was like, eh. Really? I've, I've heard okay things about it. Like, I haven't heard I've heard it's good. Um, mm-hmm. The thing is, a lot of people, they, they did the thing where I they know, gave I, out uh, review copies, but like a lot of the stuff that they fixed was in the day one patch. Mm-hmm. And actually, when that game released, uh, this happens with a lot of Sony games. The first week and a half, you don't want to play Sony games because they will constantly push updates out for it, probably from Crunch. And that's when the game like gets good or great. I guess mm-hmm. it doesn't have it doesn't happen with Naughty Dog games, and it doesn't ha- happen with um like Sucker Punch. Um, but mm-hmm. the, most of there are other ones. It's like you want to wait a week or two because it's not big patches either, but they're like little quick fixes. And that's another problem in the industry is where like the game that ships on the disc isn't not the complete game. You have to download that day one update or else you don't have the game. Yeah, it's true. Um, but it's like, also- like that's, why, that's why Cyberpunk was so broken is because the day one update wasn't there. So that's what was gold when it yeah, went gold. That, that was, that's what was gold there. Um but, you know, at the same time, we look at older games. It's like if they had the chance to do a day one update, they absolutely would have. Mm-hmm. Like if they had that chance and the game is playable. Well, the thing for is, the most like, part, a lot of older games they just came out with like director's cuts or just a silent like yeah. 1.2 update like version that slid out. Like with Zelda Ocarina of Time when that, they stopped doing that the- kind of. In that kind of the same argument though, because mm-hmm. at that point, like, isn't that like a day one update? Well, yeah, like, yeah. No, I'm saying like, it. I'm saying like back in the day, like that's that's how they got around it was by releasing a special edition or yeah. director or like like with Zelda, like I was saying, like the collector's edition that came out is the what one with the, with the stuff they took they like had to fix because like yeah, mm-hmm. with the Islamic chanting in the fire temple and the uh, Isl- Islamic imagery on the mirror shield, they they changed that on the gray card. Like that's not mm-hmm. there on the gray card or the GameCube version or the eShop version. So the only way to play it with the, like, you know, the one that shipped is to have that gold cartridge. Yeah. Just like today, the only way to play the broken ass cyberpunk is to have the disc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which is important. I'm all for that kind of stuff being saved. Oh, me too. When I do um, my video for cyberpunk, I'm playing that without the fucking patch. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going. Okay, I don't. I don't want to play that. I want to. I want to borrow your PlayStation Slim and play it on that, or your LaunchBot <laughs> Model One. Yeah, play it on Susan's PlayStation. Should I just get one. the Xbox One version and play it on my Xbox One? <laughs> Maybe, but it would probably run wow. better on Xbox, wouldn't it? So, well, yeah. <laughs> so that's all from CD Projekt Red, which I think discussions like this are going to be talked about more in the industry. Yeah, um, it's only going to get bigger as time goes forward. Because, like, like I was saying earlier, it is something that has been like a hot topic in recent 
memory? Like, I just a lot of people have tried to disdain for it. Well, I think a lot of people have tried to make it a hot topic, um, and it kind of goes into a bigger topic of union unionization. They want a union in the video game industry, which I think would make it worse. I think mm-hmm. that would make games worse. So that's for that's why I'm so like in the middle of it because once you start saying like oh we banned crunch well that's starting to sound like a union and then when you unionize that's when more control to the people but is it really control to the people or is it control to the union because i've seen like the nfl union and the nba union and the teachers union and let me tell you it doesn't make things better (laughs) it usually gets in the way of a lot of things so Mm -hmm. you got to be careful with this stuff just like with the government like interjecting into video games too it's like we don't want you to interject let us do it podcast yeah mm-hmm. but you're um, right it does it does bridge into that deeper conversation about unionizing stuff and privatizing stuff and where does that where is that place in you know the markets and whatnot so yeah because i think if a company like um whatever they're called that made hades doesn't want to do crunch and they release a 10 out of 10 game i think that is totally okay or if a company like Naughty Dog who says, hey, we got to crunch this last month and everyone's like, okay, we're going to make an awesome game. Let's do it. And they do it and they make a 10 out of 10 game. I think that's totally okay too. And that's as thing, like, as Metroid Prime okay 4 is going to be an 11 out of 10 game at this point. <laughs> yeah, they've been crunching. The game doesn't exist right now. <laughs> no. They have like... vaporware. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I expect when we come back from our holiday break that there will be even more blowout from the cyberpunk because I think I think cyberpunk is a game, an industry changing game for all the wrong reasons, <laughs> not the reasons that they wanted it to be, but it is going to definitely send ripples across I'm the gaming say, industry. I'm I am so happy it released like this because I'm not one of those people that were like super hyped for it. Oh, me I was neither. like, this looks cool. I like that aesthetic. I like that kind of world. Um, I didn't like how it's all first person, though. Um, I hope they added an update that maybe changes that, but I won't want to play that update because it won't be broken. I hope maybe. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. I, I just want to drive around and get flown into the stratosphere and fall through the earth. Like, that's, yeah, that's my some- kind of game. Like, that's, that, it's this kind of like, it's like every fun little glitch in games I used to play when I was younger all bundled into one product. <laughs> It's like the um, swing set glitch in GTA 4. Yeah, that was like the funnest thing in that game. Was driving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, when, you, when you go into it with the right state of mind, Cyberpunk is kind of the perfect game because, you know, people like bad games. I like bad exactly games. Exactly what 2020 needed and a great representation of this year. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Hey, 2020 is going to be great. Oh, God, it's on fire. Cyberpunk 2077 is 2020's game of the year. It's coming, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> I want it. It's gonna get nominated at like for a lot of rewards. I'm sure at the Game Awards next year. If it had, if it came out a week sooner, like if it came out at launch for the new consoles, I'm sure it would have been all over the Game Awards. That might have been why they delayed it. Honestly, is because well, I don't think it would have been because I think yeah. at this point it won't be at the Game Awards. But I think after they do the update in January, update in February, and they updated a whole year. By the time the next Game Awards rolls around, people will be like, oh, it's good now, and then nominate it. But, like, I, think if it, but I think if it came out when it did, no way in hell. Like it, Too much controversy like, around look it. Look at all the shit No Man's Sky got for years, and then it won a Game, uh, won a, what was it, a, a game Award this year. Yeah, good <laughs> for them, too. Just yeah, summer. great. And listen, um, that was another like, thing. Though. Super shady. Uh, I did not care for how they did that. There was another case of blatant lying to the consumer uh, yep. but they they eventually delivered what they promised i give a pass to the no man's sky team um hello games i give a pass to them because it was sean murray all the way <laughs> he was the one that was lying I, all over the I place give a pass because i think all those were planned but it got way too ambitious remember yeah. these guys they, was, these guys did the show. Show. They did Joe fucking Danger before this yeah. game. And then they were suddenly plopped onto Sony's stage at E3. Like, they got blown up way too big without, like, zero credibility. Like, mm-hmm. you guys did Joe Danger. <laughs> it's like, this game sounds cool, but, like, 
really? <laughs> and it's turned out to be a fantastic game, but Hello Games is not big, and they were not like, they didn't have that pedigree yet. So mm-hmm. I think it's a little different than CD Projekt Red. And the thing is with Sean Murray as well, he was bluffing that it would have multiplayer. Because I'm sure they were going to put it in, but he was like, oh, it's so big, your odds of finding someone are like a billion to one, and then day one, two people were in the same exact spot and couldn't see each other. <laughs> He's like, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn it, how did this happen so quickly? Yeah. Um, but like, you, I remember the collector's edition that you bought has a sticker on the back that covers up the multiplayer feature. Yeah, I think that, that was probably like a last minute thing of like, we can't get this to work, so mm-hmm. they just... It's like, Halo... Yeah. They couldn't get it to work, and then, like, they got it working that last week. Yep. Thank God, too. Well, that's it for Cyberpunk. Um, that's not even a topic for the show. It's like an hour long. Um, <laughs> shout out to Roger and during that segment. <laughs> Pretty quiet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of said my piece, and I was just letting you guys go at it. And uh, you guys went at it. I mean, I mean, I kind of agree with Jacob, but, like, also, like, we kind of mm-hmm. said, we kind of all said our pieces, and some of it's just a little bit of a... a, a I don't know. I would say I think it's just philosophy perspectives. Yeah. And I will say if you want like a better understanding of like how I feel about like crunch, cause I'm not the best with words. Um, yeah. uh, there's a, a person called noodle on YouTube who made a really good uh, video about the problems with crunch in the I don't industry. Know if I want to watch anything called some name noodle. <laughs> <laughs> <Was it? laughs> I, he's a really funny guy. Uh, he makes really he makes really good serious stuff and really good funny stuff, and he yeah. has a good way of mixing both of that in, kind of like Donkey. Um, oh, but yeah. like, um, but not uh, Donkey style. Donkey, so don't go Donkey's into it. Like his stuff has just been off the walls. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I another saying, like, one. Don't that... go into Noodle thinking it's going to be like Donkey. Just saying that like that's they're good at doing those two things in one thing another guy that is very um like anti-crunch and like but he also he talks about like everything why he doesn't just say oh crunch bad because they work hard and stuff he's like actually like no let me get into this and Mm -hmm. tell you why is um the gym quisition very knowledgeable um he's doing a lot of videos about cyberpunk right now and like if you want to hear everything that's going on because he's very like no crunch type to like respect your employees and stuff which i do agree with and like my whole thing is you just need consent. If they mm-hmm. say yes and they're getting compensated for it rightly, I think it's fine. Like I, I will stand by that the crunch that CD Project Red did that we know of, which in this day and age, if unhumane crunch happens, we're going to know because someone will leak that to someone and then it will get out there. Um, I think it's different than back then when the internet wasn't still as big as it is now. But now it all it takes is a fucking DM from a burner account and it's out there. So mm-hmm. I think we would know if any Halo 2s were happening. Um, unless, of course, the studio isn't big enough, which that's a whole... That's the whole indie scene is just... That's a whole other bag of worms. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, mean, like, I can't imagine that, like the guy who made Undertale and the guy who made uh, um, Axiom Verge... Like how much work they had to put into those uh, games? Uh, the 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 farming one too. And, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and and it's, it's crazy how one guy can make like uh, Harvest Moon better than any of the Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons. But but when it gets into that, I think that's different too because like I am personally, yeah, exactly. Like I'm writing games that's right like now. Self funded. That's mm-hmm. he makes his own. They make their own hours. They choose to do that work. That's fine. Yeah, because it's you're just not with being forced by like forcing you Daddy to Microsoft work. to do it. Yeah, yeah. So that's a whole different thing than indie side. So, but mm-hmm. well, let's get to our main topic of the week since we're an hour and forty minutes. In. <laughs> um, this is our shortest is our... <laughs> podcast. It's gonna be our longest. I know, game right? Yet. Google Docs like a page and a half. <laughs> like, yeah. Fucking a man. Roger won't shut up over there. Um, yeah, I'm no, sorry. Our topic really of the week is. Our personal game of the year. And it's pretty simple, guys. This isn't necessarily a game that came out this year. I just want to hear what were your favorite games or what is your favorite game that you played this year. That's it. So, <laughs> any answers? <laughs> I was, I, I, if Roger, do you want to go first? I can go first unless you want to go first. I feel like I've been talking a lot, so I, I, th- I think you should go. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, that's, well, that's my personal my personal favorite game that I played this year was The Outer Wilds. Uh, I played that game sometime in the summer, I believe, 
and that was just the most like just the best experience I've had this entire year playing a game. Like it it was truly a great game and I really enjoyed going through that game and figuring out stuff on my own and just the discoveries I made during that game. So have either of you guys played that game or heard about it? I've heard I, of it. I've seen some videos, but I've never played it myself. I'm, I'm I getting it. very confused with Outer Worlds because they came out at the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. they came out at the same time, and uh, they're both space games, but just wildly different as far as gameplay goes. Way different. Mm-hmm. Way different. Yeah, uh, I played so like I people say Outer Wilds. I'm like, oh, you mean Outer Worlds? And they're like, no. Yeah, I remember. Uh, <laughs> Um, I I played a, I did the infamous thirty minute playthrough of yeah. you know I tried it out was at the opening part but what I played I really liked and I was like it's installed right now on a PC um and I, it's one of those where I'm like I'm coming back to you I don't know when yeah. but I'm coming back to you I would I would say whenever you're in the mood for that type of game because sometimes you're not in the mood for those types of games right mm-hmm. the, the yeah. walking around exploring making discoveries for yourself. But when you're in the mood for that game, I mean, it's so worth it. Uh, just you, I've never, it's been so long since I've had a game give me like an actual sense of discovery and like figuring stuff out and using just, just, just logic and, mm-hmm. and for myself to, to progress in the game. And it's, it's one of those games where, you know, you have all the tools at the start. It's just knowledge and, and following logical thinking to progress through the game and figuring out its mysteries. And it's, a uh, it's time mechanic is really cool. I'm always stuck for that, no matter what's it in. So it just it's it's my personal game of the year. I really highly highly enjoyed it and recommend it. But mm-hmm. it's not yeah. for everybody. You gotta be in the mood for it. And if you don't like that type of game, then you don't like that type of game. But no, and I, I'll agree. Like I'm with you there for those games that like you have to kind of figure it out yourself because that's all my games were when I was younger. Because I played, you know, yeah, like my mom's NES or Super Nintendo. I was like, they don't give you you don't have an instruction manual for that. <laughs> in the early yeah. 2000s that's gone that's been in the trash for 20 years uh, <laughs> i don't have the internet you gotta figure it out um but it's stuff like i don't i hate games that don't respect your intelligence mm-hmm. um and that's what like going back to breath of the wild i really liked about it because it was probably the least handholdy zelda we've had in a long time and it was it's a, literally a breath of fresh air it was so nice yeah. like it games I, I like i feel like big industries were too afraid of leaving people out to where at the point where they're making rated m games that can be played by two-year-olds yeah yeah um and it's like well, you've got to have some level of respect for the intelligence of your market well well so which is nice because they've been they've been giving you the option to turn tutorials off which yeah. is like a little pop-ups it's like but like even it's like spider-man marvel spider-man there's so much where it's just like if you're starting a new game, you gotta go through all of the stuff that teaches you how to do everything again. You just can't play the, through those parts. So the um, problem is, Jake. Um, but Miles didn't do that. So, so the problem is, I mean, it's not even a problem really. But the reason so many games are like that and so handholdy is because the industry has exploded so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's just so look much at sales now, from the eighties to the two thousands to now. Like, way more people are playing games now. And mm-hmm. think about Susan playing a video game. Imagine that, she, you know, she hasn't played that many. Mm-hmm. Imagine her picking up Spider-Man. There's just little things that we as gamers understand. Like, we understand, oh, square punches, we punch, you know, just keep punching or something. Or, oh, yeah. you know, if I... I, or, I, or, I, I, I agree and disagree with you. Because there's an entire language of gaming that we just, like, comprehend. A good example is, like, on a side-scroller, we naturally know that to go right is to progress, where that might yeah. not be a language. Except for when uh, they make it aren't familiar. Yeah, that, but that app blows your mind. Or that might not be something familiar with uh, with people who aren't but familiar I think, with games. I but think it's better time, to I would argue, through gameplay rather than text on a screen in those walls of... The, here's the controller. Here's what all the buttons do. But you know, well, that's, just, that's, that's just a lazy tutorial. That's not what I'm talking yeah. about. I would yeah. argue that it's. But it's and then with that, I've game, seen so many times. She's like, found a game that she really like attached to and figured stuff out for herself through her own thought processes without like this, the, this this universal language tutorial or whatever. She would like that game ten times more, but she has to yeah. find that, that specific game for her that wouldn't hold her hand and respect her intelligence. And she would I, probably have a couple of good games that 
because she couldn't get into them because of that lack of introduction, but she would eventually find one that really just grasped her. Mm -hmm. I I agree, but at the same time, I also am like, you know, in Spider-Man, they have like those pop-ups where it tells you with a text, like what to do. And you're like, oh, we'll just learn by doing. But, you know, we can think how many times have we tried to show cousins or a girlfriend or parents a game and we just throw them in here because like, oh, they can easily do this. You know, we know how to do this. And then they try it, but they don't know what they're doing. They die and they're like, I don't get this. I give up. And it's like, well, you didn't even try. It's like, ah, it's too much going on. I don't get it. But when you, you know, for some people, when you pop up the screen and they read like, oh, I do square for light attacks and then I press triangle. Okay. And then in Yakuza, you hit square, square, triangle. Like, whoa, I did it. Like, that's what happened yeah. to her. Like, she was like, oh, I read the tutorial and I know how to fight now. And she beat all of Yakuza by herself. And I was like, that's amazing. That's hilarious. That you did that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a balance back there for sure when it comes to tutorials, introductions, and stuff. Yeah, because um, I think some do hold your hand way too much, but then I'd say a good time. example of holding your hand too much. It's just like, oh, we got her Charlie Squad. We gotta move forward to get to the next point. Here's the yellow dot on the screen. Follow the hallway where you can go no other direction. Follow that yellow dot. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like with Call of Duty. Like every Call of Duty has to have that introductory mission where you're at the firing range. It's like, all right. Yeah. Crowd a circle now. Aim down your sights. Or you have to. That's what I liked about. But the thing play. is, Modern Warfare Two, you put it on a higher difficulty, it just throws you right in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no doubt. Well, well, yeah, well, you know, well, you got to do the whole. Uh, you got to go through the, uh, you know, the part where you're going through like the speed run or whatever with Shepard watching you. But you don't have to go through the tutorial about how to throw the grenades and how to shoot through things and all that with. Uh, Here's the thing. Modern Warfare, I think, is actually a pretty good example because they make the introduction a part of like a, a training course or a part of like, yeah, a speed yeah, it's like what you do in the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty clever. To be honest with you, I think that's a decent tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, Versus like. The game's frozen now until you press this button and we're telling you how to do this with this. Yeah, yeah unlike the new Modern Warfare where it freezes the game like hold B to take to do a body takedown. It's like okay. Yeah, I hate that. I hate it. Avengers oh. is great because I love the games that like will slow down time, but you only have so much time to press the button or else you just fail it and there's a fun cutscene after that of you failing. Yeah. Um, Avengers it's I it's a game that has timed cutscenes like that, but if you let it time out, it just sits there. It doesn't <laughs> do anything until you press that button. Now, I will say, um, just like, you know, kind of contradicting myself, that I think if I gave Susan a game like The Outer Wilds, which is what this is all about, um, I think she would sit there and eventually get it as well. Mm -hmm. But that's who, but she's like that though. Like, I know her and I know that she doesn't like giving up on things. And she is the type of person that wants to do things herself. So I know that game would work. I really like that game then. Yeah, I, she honestly might, but I know, like, my mother wouldn't. Like, if I gave my mom that game, she would be like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah. I quit. Yeah. So it, it's just, it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. It depends on the game for the person, too, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because not all games are for everyone, of course. Yeah. Um, but good choice. I, I like the Outer Wilds a lot. I, I want to get back to it. Um, I was actually think? looking at it, I was looking at it right before we started this podcast because really? Epic has it's, they had their big sale with the ten dollar coupon stuff and I was going through my library and I was like oh look the the Outer Wilds yeah I, I bought that that's the, that was the first game I bought on the Epic Game Store because of some sale or that's, something. that's great that's epic. yeah yeah so I'll probably get back to that pretty soon um, Jake mm -hmm. what's your game of the year I honestly um, I played a lot of games this year. I don't remember a lot of them. <laughs> Some motherfucker wants <laughs> to say Animal Crossing. I'm gonna lose. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, 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 Animal Crossing Crossing over there. Probably, if you would have asked me like a couple weeks ago, I would have said Animal Crossing just because of like I played that game. I played so much of that game this year. It was a great game to come out this year. <laughs> I played so much of that game um, the first three months and then haven't touched since. Yeah, I, I I sunk like almost 200 hours in that game. That's how much I played that oh game. My God. Ridiculous. Um, and but like and i really liked miles morales um but i probably have to say after last night katana zero is probably my favorite for this year yeah oh wow that gave it's me quite game. it's it's just like because it does, it's one of those games like i was we were saying with the level design it respects your intelligence you have all the tools kind of like with the outer wilds to, you know it, it, without expressly telling you what they do respect your time as well yeah so like there are times where it's like 
the game will slow down and it's like press this button you're like oh what's it gonna do you press that button it's like oh wow i have that ability and then that's it and then you're just like okay um that's that ability it doesn't tell you like do this to slow down time or do this to deflect a bullet back it's just like you're getting shot at you press the te- button it tells you to and it's like okay i gotta figure it out from here um, like that. so that's what like, i was it, it, about uh that or wild is you progress at your own rate you know mm-hmm. like like you go at the level that you go at and it's mm-hmm. not compared to anything else it, katana zero two has a very dynamic story too like i tried to play it as good as i could and i still don't think i got the, the best ending i don't know because i think there are multiple endings for the game i know there's definitely some endings for it. i don't know what's canon um but i know i got the to be continued one so i'm assuming that's where the story is going to pick up from um but like there are times where like you can go through a level like there's one where you break into a prison to kill a guy and you get there and all the guys have already been killed so then you got to just escape you can hack and slash your way through all the police um like you do any other level or since they're, you know, good guys, you can spare them and just, like, stealth around them. And it's a lot harder to do that, but it's a lot more rewarding because mm-hmm. your your mission in that game was not to have any other excess casualties, just get the target and leave. Yeah. So if you do kill the, all the police, your employers are mad at you. Um, and that will take your relationship with your employers down a different path in the story. Um, but it's the easier route. Or you can do the stealth and spare them and do what you were supposed to. Um Another thing, too, is, like, there's a whole character that I would have been gone for my whole game. Uh, there was a receptionist near the beginning where um, you can just completely just... I saw throw, you do this part. Yeah, you saw me, like, piss her off. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of what happened when you do that, I completely restarted the game and didn't want to do that route because um, when I did that, I pissed her off. I came downstairs after killing all the guys, and the cops are there, like hey, who did this? And it was, she's like, that guy, he's the one, he's an asshole. She runs off and then they're, you, you know, you kill the cops and leave and they're like, because of your actions, we had to kill that receptionist. What, it, like, you need to calm the fuck down. And I'm like, no! <laughs> so I went back through and like, if you go through a different conversation route with her, she'll get like really flirty with you because she's like, oh my gosh, what are you like dressed up for? It's like, oh, it's cosplay. It's like, oh my gosh, I love cosplay. What are you cosplaying as? It's like, oh, it's from some anime. She's like, I love anime. I've never heard of that one. Uh, so you just in, like go through this whole side thing. And then she'll show up later in the story too. And she'll be like, oh, it's you. Hey, I looked up that anime, but I couldn't find it. And you're like, well, it's really niche. And she's like, well, maybe we could like watch it sometime together. I don't know. I see why Jake likes this game now. I see why this game. <laughs> yeah, is. I know. <laughs> no. The girl screams as a reception. <laughs> He's like, ah! <laughs> so he's talking anime with him at him. So like, a really lighthearted moment in a really heavy game. Yeah. Um, which I, I like that that was in there. Cause like on it, like if I would have continued playing from what you saw last night, I would have never seen her again and had no real interaction with her except for her being pissed off that I kept, you know, cause it, cause what it does is you can just skip through the text and the dialogue, but that'll make you a more aggressive character. So, um, what you'll have is a little t- a bar that a lot of games will have. You have a limited time to pick a response or else it just picks whatever is on. But if you hit something too early, it'll be highlighted in red and be an aggressive answer. Or you can wait until the bar is white and then pick a level-headed answer. That's which cool. sometimes sometimes the answer will be that's the same cool. as the one that is in the red, but it's the way that you say it. So if you yeah. don't interrupt someone and say it, then it's taken in a that's, different context. That's actually an improvement in a lot of uh, dialogue systems you see in games, because a lot of them are very bare bones and basic. And I feel like they've always needed to improve dialogue systems in games you know what i mean mm-hmm. so, and another thing too it's like if you wait the timer out it's whatever you're highlighted on you don't get to just like skip a dialogue box and say nothing which is say it. yeah there's times like where i was like i don't want to say any of this stuff like and they would only give me one option it's like can i just time this out and not say anything because i think that's the appropriate thing in this situation is to just not say anything and then it auto selected it and i had to i had to say that line mm-hmm. um so there was times where i got like compromised <laughs> in my story um because of like certain text strings that i chose or uh i had to pick something because of uh, the way the conversation went um no, but, that's yeah, awesome, it's, though. it's it's a super cool idea for a game and i really enjoyed it i think it was really short which was sad i'm glad i was able to beat it in one night so that was kind of you know, so I didn't have another game on my <laughs> list of things to beat, or and I didn't have a chance to like walk away from it and not play it again. Because mm-hmm. um, 
I really like, and there's like, a, I don't know. I don't want to get to it. I don't want to talk all about all the plot, but like, it's, it's the moments in between the action are really what made it that game. Yeah, I mean, you basically, you basically sold me on it. So mm-hmm. no, like, yeah, me too. Like, that's awesome. Like definitely pick it up. Cause like out of all the games I played this year, that's the biggest standout for me. Yeah, that's great. And I love it when it's small indie games that just mm-hmm. hit the hardest. Oh, you know? and the music is so Oh, good. yeah. And that's like, nothing about the Outer Wilds, too, is the music's really cool. I love the music in the Outer Wilds. So good. Yeah. It, it, like, the I, I haven't heard Outer Wilds. I need to play it, too. Um, it's but, so... Like, it, just, it, it just, just hits you in the feel somehow. Just get, get on Spotify, and li- that's what I do, is I have a playlist of, like, 3,000 video game soundtracks. Mm-hmm. And I know when it's Outer, Outer Wilds coming on, it's good. Like, it's, if you like so that kind of like 80s noir uh, synthesis um, vaporwave kind of music, like that's all that it, this is. Like it's very cyberpunk music. <laughs> so if you're looking for like a cyberpunk fix, play Katana Zero. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool because like when you start a stage like he you see him put his headphones in and hit play on his like ipod or whatever and then that's the music he's he's listening to mm. in that level so all the music has is based on it's not like just music that's playing it's music that's in that world gotcha uh, so it's tied to everything you're doing or um like if you're in a room and there's music playing it's because it's on like a radio or a record player um that's or cool like that. i like that that's mm-hmm. awesome it's creative mm-hmm well, that's really cool, man. Um, yeah, so that was uh, one more time for the audience. That game was called... Uh, Katana Zero. Katana Zero. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Jake's I, honestly, Game of the Year. I'm, I'm glad. I picked it up on a whim. I was just, like I said, on the eShop for their Black Friday sale. Saw it was like really cheap. It was like, I'll pick that up. It looks cool. And so that was like my third game. That's how I was with the Outer Wilds. I was just drawn in by the art of it, and I, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I've heard of this. I don't know anything about it. The art looks cool. I'll play it. Mm-hmm. And, and I, <laughs> those are some of the best ones. I know, and I was worried too when I first saw it because, like, well, this looks like it's one of those like games that are like really balls to the wall hard and can get really crazy later, which it does. It does get really balls to the wall and hard later, but it's not like impossible. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I don't know, like impossible game levels of stupid just out of curiosity um what was your game of the year before that just like real quick oh for me um i mean like i probably would have said miles morales gotcha uh, okay because like again it, i don't think either of these games would be like my favorite games of all time katana zero is definitely up there now for me mm-hmm. um, Miles morales i or even the original spider-man game i would say is up there with my favorite games but out of what i played yeah, yeah, it's the most fun um yeah and I like the stories for the Spider-Man games, but um, I don't know. It, it, it's Spider-Man game one of my most fun games to play. I'll just replay that game because I just have so much fun mm-hmm. playing it. And Miles Morales, I it has think has the best replay value because it's going back to playing Spider-Man Remastered. It was there's just so much to do. Like there's so much bullshit and side quests and stuff to do to 100 percent that game. Where Miles <laughs> Morales really like figured out how to do the side quest bullshit and make it not seem like yeah. the most tedious shit in the world. I'll probably really like Miles Morales then, because for me, Spider- in the Spider-Man, I have so much fun with the combat, and just like mm-hmm. messing with all the different gadgets, and like swinging oh, yeah. from doing and stuff. They, they really refined the gadgets too. They went from having like 8 to 4, but you have your electric power and your invisibility as well, so it, it, it works within that system. Like, there's a lot yeah. of gadgets that were in the original Spider-Man that were like, they're fun to use, but I never use them. Mm-hmm. I used all four of those oh, gadgets yeah. throughout the whole campaign. I, well, that's what I had so much fun with the Spider Man is is I got really good with combining all the different gadgets and whatnot. I got really into the combat of that game. I mostly did just like web based attacks in like <laughs> the the melees and stuff. So I, I barely ever like I would forget I had those tools available and I'd be like, Oh yeah, this starts hard, but I can throw out like a hundred spider drones and just get the focus off of me or throw a gravity well down and launch people in the air. So I made those games way harder than Dude, the I, would, I would do be like web bombs and then can cuss them to a walls and mm-hmm. the gravity See, I, I would just use the web them and throw them down I would do all sorts of fun stuff like, another thing like I learned playing Miles Morales too which I feel so stupid is like you just knock someone over and just web them to the ground they're done <laughs> it makes some <laughs> yeah. areas go way faster 
That's how the OG is too. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm playing through that. Like I didn't. I never played that way the first time I played through. I would beat everyone to a pulp until they were done, or I would use oh, the uh, I mean, web, which it just launched them and stuck them to a wall, or the web blossom. <laughs> which web oh, blossom? Andrew, is still- Andrew, what was your favorite? What was your game of the year? My game of the year. So it's this really was one of the best years for Andrew. Um, yeah, honestly. we got so many good games that Andrew wanted to play and that I did play. And a lot of them I beat on um, just, you know, the obvious ones, of course, we got a new Yakuza, Yakuza, like a dragon. Um, I haven't beat it yet, but already 20 hours in, I can tell it's going to be one of my favorite Yakuza games. It's fucking awesome. The combat works so well. The story is so great. Um, it looks amazing. This uh, it's, it's so good. The characters are great. I love it. Um, but also this year we got the Yakuza Remaster Trilogy, so that's three, four, and five that came out. Um, mm-hmm. I only played some of three, which um, Yakuza Three is good. It was my favorite story of the game, just because it was more like small, more mm-hmm. about Kiru with the orphanage. So, but that's not my game of the year. Uh, Persona Five Royale came out this year. <laughs> Love Persona. Um, I didn't beat that either because honestly, Persona Five kind of burnt me out. Um, yeah, I didn't love it as much as four, but I thought it was still good. And I've heard Royale is really good, and I've actually had a lot of my friends be like, "Hey, why haven't you beaten Royale? I've beaten Royale. What are you doing?" I'm like, "I don't know what I'm doing. Um, not playing Persona, obviously." But that came out, and then Modern Warfare Two Remastered came out, which that's my favorite oh, yeah. Call of Duty. I forgot ever. that came out this year. That's my favorite Call of Duty, period. And it's for the story, so I didn't even give a shit that the most player wasn't there. Um, about that game, though, they re- fucked up the audio with that, so the mm-hmm. soundtrack isn't as loud, and it honestly kind of ruined it for me. That's, so that thing, that's why I never finished it, because like, I couldn't hear the music, and I was just like, this is this is way more boring without the music. Yeah, it's not as good. Hans Zimmer just captured Hans Zimmer. that game. Yo, Did they ever fix that? I don't know. I hope they did. I, I'll go back and I'll try it again, because... <laughs> I want to platinum it. I'm really close to platinum it, but so oh, but that came out, game. Um, and I beat that. Um, but and then we had a new Resident Evil, Resident Evil Three remake, which I personally really liked. Like I thought it was fantastic. I know a lot of people didn't like it because it was more actiony and stuff. I loved it. Um, I loved the thing I heard about it was so short. It was short, but kind of what I've been saying this whole podcast is I'm more into short games right now. Uh, True too many games and there's too many things to do so but that came out and i love that game um last of us part two gonna be honest jake can attest to this i fucking hated that game when i first beat it but at the same time i fucking love that game when i first beat it and over the last eight six months seven months i've really marinated on it and I think I, I think I like it a lot more than i originally thought at first i was like ah seven out of ten but now i'm really like nine nine and a half out of ten like i'm really coming to appreciate the story and i want to play through it again so um ghost of tsushima was really close to being my game of the year it was really fucking close mm-hmm. really see, liked that game. if i had played that game it probably would have been my game of the year uh before uh katana zero which i don't know i think it's I don't have really any frame of reference for how that game plays, so it could have mm-hmm. still beat out Katana Zero if I had played it, but I don't know. I but it looked cool. <laughs> it's beautiful. Hey, hey, start off. Ghost of Tsushima, beautiful game. They got Feudal Japan perfectly and captured in that game. Um, the characters, I just kind of said they're kind of hit or miss. I don't remember all of them, but I remember their faces and their personalities. And I remember liking them uh, when I was playing the game. The story isn't really there, but it's not really about the story. It's more about Jin's personal story and its personal adventure. Because the whole Mongolian invasion is happening, but it's more about Jin and his uncle and him disgracing his honor as a samurai and him coming to terms with that. And like, what are you willing to give up to win to beat the enemy? And it's kind of like a story of the samurai because they were all about the honor stuff. But then when they started fighting people that weren't all about that, they were like, Oh, we're getting massacred. So we got to do something about this. And it was like old school, new school fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, That's kind of like the Mandalorian. 
Yeah, I is it? I mean, it's it's got. I mean, Star Wars just in general is very based off like those old samurai movies. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think they, like one thing they, they really them. did is they just fully embrace that like old school samurai and Western um, like uh, background that yeah. Star Wars had and just made that Mandalorian. So there is like stuff where he has have to like compromise his fa- like beliefs like uh, as know, a Mandalorian. It, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the, and the, like he has to, you know, they Mandalorians are like getting all wiped out. So they had to kind of change the way they did things. Uh, it's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, so. Well, you talked about the old way versus the new way of fighting. I thought of the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson, how they kind of. Oh had yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, no, no, exactly. No, like that's that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Um, yeah, <laughs> underrated. Uh, I like it. I agree. Um, but yeah, so Ghost of Tsushima. It was really close, like so close. Love the music. Love everything about it. But I heard the sound design super good. Of course. My game of the year. I, I thought about this a long time. I was like, there's a new Yakuza. There's a new Persona. But honestly, Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's mm-hmm. got to be my game of the year. It's All right. Let's go. I and yeah, I... So me and Jake, we kind of played it in tandem at the yep. beginning. So we kept cool. like we were coming home, and we were like, oh, what are you on? What are you on? And we are like, oh, now he's on Chapter 7. Now I'm on Chapter 7. I'm on Chapter 8. Now he's on Chapter 8. And we honestly beat it, like, within 12 hours of each other. Like, it was so cool going I was going to beat it cool. before you, I think. I was on track to beating it right before you, and then I had to, like, work a ton. Yeah, yeah, you got called in. <laughs> Those are, that's always a great experience. I remember mm-hmm. we and all the people we worked with at, when we worked at Walmart, we kind of did that with Breath of the Wild. We are all mm-hmm. playing them kind of side by side. And Spider-Man. <laughs> Every new day would be like, oh, what part did you go to and explore? So that's that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. So that game is just like I, I don't know. I you know I love Final Fantasy. Um, I've loved it for uh, at this point most of my life. Um, Final Fantasy VII I didn't play as a kid, so I don't have that nostalgia there. But I did play it as a teenager um, when I got the Vita. I got. I was like really into the Vita. I still am into the Vita, but you know, I got a lot of those PS One classics. And of course, like when you look up uh, top PS One classics to buy for the Vita, Final Fantasy Seven is going to be on there. I was like, okay, let's get it. And I told Jake this uh, a couple days ago. I was like, you know, the first time I beat Final Fantasy Seven, I, I didn't really know what happened. Like I knew some cool stuff happened, but like the story, I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> what happened? <Yeah. laughs> What's going on? But then I beat it a second time. And I was like, oh, okay. So Genova's an alien, and Cloud is a failed clone, and Sephiroth is a Genova. And then Aerith is hold here, up, and, she, up, and she gets stabbed, but then she's a part of the planet, but the planet speaks, but then there's a big meteor falling down. There's so many different things happening. But then, so Roger, the great thing is, in Remake, it takes all that. It's like, okay. Throw it out the window. <laughs> like you don't fucking know anything that's gonna happen now. Cause we're gonna remake the game, but we're not just remaking the game. We're remaking the timeline. Nothing. Yeah. Everything you know, throw it out. All that shit about like Genova's still there. The alien's still there. You fight Genova in Final Fantasy Seven. You fucking fight one winged angel Sephiroth in the remake. Okay, okay, I'm happy I'm happy that that's your game of the year. We gotta stop talking about this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can Midgar looks beautiful. The music is great. The side oh, yeah. quests suck ass. The side characters <laughs> aren't that great, but it doesn't fucking matter because the Remember combat the, uh... the combat is amazing. And Jake, we talk about the combat and I know you're not too keen on this game, but Mm-hmm. So after I beat this game, I was like, oh, I like this game. This is fun. You know, it, it was good. It was Final Fantasy VII. I, I really liked it. I teared up on the opening bombing mission. Like every time I played, I still tear up. But when I went back for my hard mode playthrough, I learned how to play the game. And the game went from an 8 to a 10 in half a second. Because I was like, yeah. oh, these abilities, they're not just there for flash you actually use them in the game yeah i will say i I was using like the tier one spells or magic through the entire game up until sephiroth when andrew told me i could use higher levels because i thought it was already when it said like i unlocked a better version 
I just thought it was using those from that point. <laughs> yeah, no, you had to switch them over and stuff. And then so, yeah. like, I didn't realize I could toggle through like a better healing. Mm-hmm. And I would have been using that the whole like there was so many like I'm sure I probably would like it better because there were so many parts with like the ghosts and the ghost, the yeah. people uh, that were like so stupid and hard because I kept dying <laughs> and I would like I couldn't heal enough to keep that's, up with it and I'm like what is happening? That's the cool thing too. So like in the original Final Fantasy VII, you meet this one girl who says one line about oh if you get trapped in the rail yard, ghosts will take you, and that's it. That's all there is about ghosts they make that a whole fucking chapter and remake and it's mm-hmm. so cool or when you first meet up with Aerith and you're walking along and a fucking house just pops up and you're like what this is a weird enemy and then you fight it's it's so cool it's so cool game of the year <laughs> he muted himself <laughs> i respect that <laughs> um i guess i can talk more about it then but yeah so when you fight the hell house um when you're I, I mean, I don't know. I, I could gush about this game for hours, honestly. No, I know you could. Like, it, I, I will say, like, I didn't hate Final Fantasy VII Remake. I didn't love it. Definitely not as much as you do. Um, but I just, that, the combat was okay. It's just I've played better versions of that style of combat. The combat's okay, um, but it's like I said, like if you go I think back, it's like it's so weird how they mishmashed turn base with active combat. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. I that's how I mainly played the game was stopping everything, choosing a thing, and then playing. Which but it, it is like that, but also it really is about switching characters constantly. Mm-hmm. So you are never just sitting and waiting. You're always like, okay, go to this character, this, not go to this character. And you know, like that's how it's at least on hard mode, that's how it's meant to be played. And I don't I I find it so much more satisfying on hard mode because it really is hard. Um you can't use items on it and you don't restore MP from benches and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's more challenging. I think that's why I like it too. Uh f- so for the sake of Roger, we'll stop talking about the game um <laughs> just know that out of all the games i played this year that is my favorite one and it was roger are you there or is he hello <laughs> you want to type and tell him we done or something um because there is one thing that about final fantasy 7 remake that i want to tell roger as well which I told you, but you didn't listen I, to me. And you I, completely, to me. I completely muted you guys. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't <laughs> That's fine. Um, Roger, there is one thing, though. And I told Jake this, but he didn't listen to me. And I think it affected why he doesn't like the game as much. Probably. But before you play Final Fantasy Remake, play Final Fantasy VII, the original. Okay. I have it downloaded on my Xbox. I just haven't decided if I want to play through it first or if I want to do the remake first. Well, see, that's Do that the, one like, first. I was under the impression that this was a remake. Not but like even, an entire changing of universe and it's Final Fantasy as we know it. But and see, to understand then, the changes, you not, must have had in-depth knowledge of the Final Fantasy 7 world. Because that's the thing about with remake, it kind of it really does. I assume there would have been some like fan service like moments where it was like references I wouldn't have gotten. Like that's what I was expecting for par for the course. Not to not no, in- understand the entirety of the finale of that game. It, it shows the ending of Final Fantasy VII in remake. Oh yeah. So like play play the original first, and you have the Xbox version. You said. Yeah, I mean, I think it's. I don't know if it's like an HD port or whatever, but I have it on don't? my Xbox. Don't feel bad, uh, or don't don't feel too proud to use the no encounters, the fast forward, the super strength stuff. Just get through the game. Like okay. when I'll I focus, it, I'll, I'll focus on just beating the game. Then yeah, I don't worry like, about also Roger, just, story beats, but like don't worry about like oh I feel like I'm cheating it or something. Like nah, just it's an old game. It's kind of like grindy. Just get through it. Yeah, with those type of games, especially those turn based games, I usually don't. What me. Gongaga. Oh my gosh, I hate it. You Gongaga? Once, once Gongaga. you play through all that stuff, you'll understand. No, you won't, because that's from Crisis Core. <laughs> hey, you're the worst ever person. Play the game and you'll you understand. Gotta, you gotta play Crisis Core too, or else you don't understand what happens there. Yeah, watch Advent Children too, kind of. 
Yeah. All right. All right. I'll yeah. Yeah. I'll play Final Fantasy. We'll start there. Yeah. Start with the game. Um, it's a good game though. Because that's and the thing. honestly, it's Affin Children. That's what it, this is. What is that universe is becoming? Um, it's, I mean, yeah, kind of. Um, but yeah, that's definitely my game of the year. So. I think that was good discussion. Uh, we scared Roger away, so that's always good. Uh, I literally um, left. <laughs> you know, literally, I'm not doing it. To be fair, I didn't know you hadn't played it yet or that you were planning to play it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is a 23-year-old game, so it's like... <laughs> I mean, I told you before, though. <laughs> like, when you've talked about it, I've been like, yeah, I, I really want to play that game. I'm just, I'm just waiting for it to, to pick it up. You're waiting no. for it to come out on Xbox? It's What's been that? out on Xbox for a while. No, the new one. No, he's talking Netflix. about the original. No, I know. I was just about like... Oh, I got you. The one. remake. Yeah. Being a funny guy over here. A little, a little jokes. You're a little funny guy. I'm sorry. Big, big right. funny guy on campus. Go on, go on. Um, is there anything else you guys want to mention about your game of the year? Or are you good with it? Um, I think I've talked katana zero up enough yeah yeah i'm yeah. i both those games that you guys mentioned i want to play now mm-hmm. so honestly like if you've got like hey. four hours <laughs> sit down with katana zero all right well in that case we're going to move on to our next section which is free games of the month um we've already gone over all of them but i just want to remind everyone again that epic game store is having us 12 days of christmas going on right now the list got leaked so if you're interested in any of those games, go ahead and just look up the list and mark it on your calendar. Um, free games, completely free. Also, the Steam Winter Sale is expected to start on December 22nd. Um, it's not confirmed, but that's traditionally when they start. So keep an eye out for that. Always great deals on the Steam Winter Sale. And of course, Xbox and PlayStation. And I'm sure Nintendo and Stadia, to an extent, I'm sure, are all having their holiday Christmas sales. So. I know PlayStation sale starts on Tuesday, or yeah. the 22nd. Yep, so be a, be on the lookout for that. Uh, these companies know that you're getting gift cards and cash and all that, and they want to sell you some good games on there. So keep your eyes open. Now, boys, for the new big releases this week, there are no big releases Happy holidays. That's it. There's no big releases. No <laughs> one's releasing their games right now. It's Christmas time. Everyone's at home. So with that being said, is there anything else you guys would like to discuss or mention or talk about for our last podcast of 2020? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I'll say, I, I will say how my attitude towards Nintendo has definitely changed like 180 this year yeah it, like positive or negative negative yeah uh, they've yeah. really they've really dropped the ball mm-hmm. they really have i don't know what is going like, i feel like they don't even they're like depressed it's There's funny something going wrong the parents are getting divorced and they <laughs> don't know what to do right now so they're not doing anything it, and when they funny. do something if they make people put a lot of effort into it mm-hmm. The defense for Nintendo is honestly just as bad as the defense was for Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. Like people still defend Nintendo to the de- to the death, which you know, granted, that, there is forty years of you know, fandom that. built up. But I, think I love Nintendo. I still love them. I hate seeing them in this spot because it's like it, it's almost worse than how it felt to be a Nintendo fan during the Wii U era. Strangely enough. Like yeah. at least during the Wii U era, they it seemed like they were still trying to do something with that. But like they're on your side still. Yeah, and then now ever since it's honestly ever since Awada passed, it's you know say what you will, what he did for the company and his like uh, the direction he was moving it towards wasn't exactly like competitive with the other guys, but at least like it, it seemed like fun. I don't know, like there was always some element of fun or like not so serious they were like the fun company to watch um they were the interesting company yeah like they they always had something going on and now it's it feels like where's doug bowser (laughs) where's he been since reggie left it was like they did that one video where they made a joke about his name and then then that guy just like dipped 
Yeah. And then we never see the new president ever. There's no like a Wada asks with him. Um, everything about Shigeru Miyamoto that comes out is how like authoritarian he is with his IP, which like, I get it. He invented Zelda and Mario and all that, but like, he just doesn't let any, like I, I read stuff about how, like how against he was Mario galaxy having any story. Um, and they like compromised by having the Rosalina storybook, which is like the coolest thing in that game. And then the reason two didn't have Rosalina or any sort of story in it is because of Miyamoto being like, no, no story. No, we're not doing it. We're yeah. just game. Just game. It's kind of a bigger like discussion, which we won't get into now, but definitely a topic that we can talk about another day is that mm-hmm. what is more important with these companies? Because before prior, wait, okay. So what I'm saying is back when um, Reggie and Iwata and all them were talking heads, that's also when, um, you know, Don Matrick was a talking head, when Shuhei Yoshida was talking head. Like, everyone had their person that they, like, was front stage, center, like, hey, look, I'm the face of PlayStation. I'm the face of Xbox. I'm the face of whatever, right? Um, and even recently, we still see Phil Spencer here and there. Um, we don't really see anyone from PlayStation anymore. I know their president. I think it... Oh, who's their president? I don't know who their president is right now. But... It's the dude that from Horizon Studio. He came over and you know, from Gorilla. He's the president now. But like, I don't even know his name. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the thing that Xbox and PlayStation are doing is they're like, we'll let the games talk, um, and they are doing that. But Xbox right now doesn't isn't doesn't have the games to talk. But the they games. still have they still have Phil Spencer go out there, and we still see him talking all the time. And he's like, hey, he's telling us Xbox is doing things we have things in motion we have all these ip we have all these developers developing we don't even know how many developers are in nintendo i feel like nintendo's stuck in 1980 they're still stuck in the they probably still think they're fighting sega right now like they don't know what they're doing they're trying to be secretive they're trying to be controlling with their ip and it's just such an old school way of thinking which sony was like that in 2006 with the ps3 and then they learned oh this is a really bad way of doing business. We should it's very and, traditional, like very traditional, and we should switch it around because it's not the 20th century anymore, and it works better when you switch it. And like, it, it's weird because it's like the only two people in Nintendo that are like have any sort of like fun watching anymore is Aonuma and Sakurai, and Sakurai isn't even Nintendo, Nintendo anymore. Exactly, Sakurai feels like the face in Nintendo, honestly, because like, he's the he, one we hear about the most. One of the last people that like had a voice at Nintendo that still comes out and talks to us and has fun with the audience. Yeah. And Al Numa, like God bless his soul, but he's like getting up there in age as well. And like, like he's never constantly hear- having to fight with Miyamoto on what to do with Zelda. Yeah. Zelda, like, he I, doesn't, Miyamoto doesn't do any game design anymore. He just sits I, there and like tells people what to do, I guess. It's it's really depressing. Cause you know, Miyamoto, of course I'm a huge legend and Zelda fan. Huge. Yeah, so one much of the most influential games of my life and it's just like to see what happened to him it's just like oh it hurts it he hurts. made it to know what it was but his game philosophy is so different from what people want it's just old school yeah yeah it's there and i guess that's just kind of how japan is it's very you but know i don't think that's how japan is i think that's how no, old I mean, school like, japan is. yeah that, that's the thing he is old school they're, they're yeah. every, like japan is a very like tradition-based company like company <laughs> uh country um and it makes sense like sony they moved their headquarters out of japan it's in california now like they they, they realized like for this to work we got to get it out of japan mm-hmm. so and like honestly Play, playstation did not sony PlayStation. the double whammy of losing awada and reggie from nintendo i mean reggie still alive um it just kind of was really sad because i don't think nintendo's ever been the same since I still think Reggie left, by the way. Well, but, yeah. Yeah, like, but like not retiring, like I think he quit. Like I think he knew stuff was up. Yeah, and I saw the writing on the wall, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's like it, it's kind of felt feels like how Apple does now post Steve Jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a very similar feeling, and I don't want to see Nintendo become like a company how Apple is now. I think they're already there, dude. Yeah. I think they're already selling overpriced products not listening to their consumers being mm-hmm. very controlling about their products like it's because I, they, they know people will buy it 
That's- yeah, no, it, that's exactly what it is. It's they, they have that brand loyalty, so they don't care. They're like, you're going to buy this either way, so shut up. Mm-hmm. Don't tell us yeah, what to do. Hopefully, hopefully with the pushback they've been getting, you know, they could do some sort of reform in, but I don't know. And the thing is, too, it's working for them because, like, Nintendo, they, they're the best-selling console this year every month. Exactly, um, yeah. And, and, and money, and that's the big thing is that money talks. Like, you can have consumers upset all day, but if you're still on top of the charts and you're still making money, it doesn't matter. I think, and I work and like every every day. There's always someone asking, "Do you guys have Nintendo Switches? Do you guys have Nintendo Switches? When will you get Nintendo Switches?" That's three years into a console's life. I've never seen that before, and I know this is a very special year because of production and the COVID. But like, yeah, because I mean, people are asking for PS4s and Xbox Ones this year as well. Not as much as the Switch. That was. And the thing is, like, because like the PS4 and Xbox, they would have their much more restocks than the Switches would. Um, and I don't know if that was on purpose on Nintendo's part, but I know they did switch like uh, production factories in, right when this all started, the like COVID mm-hmm. stuff started. So it was kind of like it, it could have been that, and it's probably it, was that. They like moved them to Vietnam or something just to get around the, uh, the import tariffs with China. Yeah. Um, but that was going to cause a delay in their production, but then it ended up being a much more exponential delay because of COVID popping up mm-hmm. right after that happened. Um, yeah, they're so. uh, they're definitely a company that I mean we'll keep we'll keep an eye on every gaming company, of course. But Nintendo will definitely keep a close eye on these coming years because they got to be planning something, and I don't know if that plan is to release a new console. Which, I mean, obviously will, or if it's to release new games, because there's, I think it's a real possibility that next year we see one major release on Switch, maybe two. Like, we'll probably get a new Pokemon game on there, and then... We'll probably get Breath of the Wild 2 next year as well. No, I don't think we will. You don't think so? Because I thought that game was for sure coming out this year. Like, I was like, that game, they already have the world, they already have everything, they're releasing it this year. Now, at this point... I think they're pulling a Wii U again. They're going to wait till whatever their next console is and do a cross-generational thing. Mm -hmm. Because I think they're giving up on the Switch because the Switch was not the people that are there right now. That was not their console. And I think they are moving it over. I'm with you on that because of how traditional Nintendo is. I feel like that is very plausible that they just don't want to do anything with it anymore. Yeah. Uh, They have to because like money, but they're not, they're doing the bare minimum. Mm Mm-hmm. Which you get? It's sad because the Switch is a like great idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. Executed a little poorly, but it's still pretty it good. So yeah, enough to sell as well as it did. Mm-hmm. Like it saved Nintendo. <laughs> I'll give it that. Like because if they would have had another like Wii U with the Switch, I'm. It's very plausible they could have just went third party. God, I wish. I really wish. <laughs> like if, if like it may have took another console to flop for them to do that, but I, I honestly think if the Switch, especially after this year, would have been bad, they they wouldn't be be able to continue being a hardware producer. I really wish it would go the Sega route. It would be so nice. Roger, do you have any closing thoughts on this 2020 final episode? Uh, no, sir. Have a Merry Christmas and good holidays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rogers is much more like, nah, I'm good. Merry Christmas, <laughs> yeah. bro. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sad. Yeah. Well, I guess my closing thoughts are, well, I want to thank you two, of course. Um, we're on episode 12 of this podcast, but it's already getting so many views. Um, we're blowing up, honestly. And, you know, of course, we're not in the top of any charts or anything like that, but we do have a pretty good chunk of audience we're getting like 50 60 100 downloads a week 200 oh downloads a week like we're we're doing really, really good yeah mm-hmm, no we're doing really good um like i think our week our monthly average now is somewhere around 500 downloads Damn. um we're so <laughs> people i mean that is a possibility in the future but i want to thank you two for sticking it out and doing this and People will really enjoy it. Um, both people I see in person, and of course, online feedback. People are liking the show. So that's awesome. And then, of course, I want to thank the audience as well for listening and being a part of this. Um, one day, I would like to get more fan interaction, audience interaction to hear, maybe get some audience questions and stuff like that. 
I think before we do all any of that, we need to get some other things sorted out first. But that is definitely a thing that we have in mind, that we have planned. We also want to get guests on the here. Levi was supposed to come on to this podcast episode, but conflicting schedules, things like that. So he wasn't able to make it. Hopefully next year sometime we can get him on, talk about cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, who knows where CD Projekt Red will be at that point. Maybe they'll be imploded. Who knows? Um, that's just something we have to wait and find out. Off of all the shelves. He'll not be able to find it anywhere. Breaking news. Mr. Cyberpunk is now going door to door and taking your copy back and handing you a crisp $100 bill as an Cyberpunk. apology. Cyberpunk has been found in the parking lot with a hose coming from the exhaust into his car. Oh my god. Um... Anyways, thank you to the audience for listening to us. Thank you to my co-host. Um, is there anyone else I should thank? Thank you to Susan, of course, Jesus. for supporting me with this uh, these po- these, this podcast and another one, of course. Uh, I take a lot of time writing them and editing them and recording, of course, and all that stuff. And she supports me with it and sticks it out. So thank you very much to her. I love her. She's great and awesome. Um, and yeah, like Roger said, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope everyone is staying safe out there. COVID's getting really bad, even though no one's talking about it anymore, at least for the U.S. Actually, around the world, honestly, guys. Like, COVID's hitting really fucking hard right now. They have that new mutation over in the U.K. where it's spreading like wildfire. Um, so everyone, please stay safe. Um, if you can, stay home for the holidays. If you're going to go places, make sure everyone's all good. Don't want to infect grandma. We don't want to kill grandma on Christmas. That'd be pretty oh, fucking we love, depressing. We grandma. We're going to change. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer to grandma got COVID. Grandma got sneezed on and fucking died three weeks later in a hospital. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, everyone stay safe and stuff like that. Um, And yeah, that's, that's it for 2020. That's a wrap, boys. We did it. Woo! 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 Yeah. Way Ooh. to go. All right, now that we're done with this episodes, fuck everyone else. Got it, Bob. Where are we? Oh yeah, oh shit, we're still recording. Yeah, twelve episodes. Kind of crazy, isn't it? It's Can't three months. This far, could this consistent? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's been kind well, of consistent. Wait, yeah, we, we have some rough patches. It's more or less a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that's something that I want to kind of iron out too for next year. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get this format down. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. We love you, and we'll see you in 2021. No no podcast next week, by the way. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye. Bye.